Jotaro, what did you do just now? I'm asking you, what did you do just now? Why are you alive? Don't know. But it looks like your stand ain't all it's cracked up to be. Hold your tongue. The world! The time has frozen. Hello everyone, welcome to the Cathedral of Shadows, a Duwang translated podcast. My name is Rosin. I'm Katsu. And I snuck in here and held them at gunpoint. Hmm. Yeah, oh my. that was kind of scary. Yeah. Good thing our stands caught the bullets for us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our good friend Crazy Tank, fellow fellow JoJo nerd, which is yeah. <laughs> which is the reason I dragged him on here. Is like we're doing a JoJo podcast. You know the most out of all of my friends, so which is that go. much. Yeah. So <laughs> gotta gotta make do with what we have. So but yeah, JoJo's is awesome. We've been talking about it forever now, so it's like, you know what, let's get it all out of our system. Even then this probably won't help that much. Let's just have a JoJo podcast for a special episode. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna go a quick rundown through our experience with the series and various parts of it. <laughs> um but first, I guess we should talk about the big, the big Mega Ten news, um, and that is that Nocturne recently was released as a PS2 classic on PSN. Yeah, and we were wrong. <laughs> Actually, I think you were right. I think I was the one that was wrong because I'm like, yeah, I don't think Nocturne's gonna be the one or whatever I said. So, <laughs> I was horribly wrong. So, did did either of you download it? Uh, not yet. I'm but broke. I want to. Okay, I'm good. Broke. So I don't have. To. I have. Uh, I've had a very odd experience with it so far. Um, so I, I do want to say, as soon as I downloaded it, I'm like, I wonder how this is going to look. And I was like, uh, PS2 classics are usually fine. Uh, Persona 3 had some texture issues from what I remember, but aside from that, you know, it's fine. I start the game, and the game looks pretty bad. Like, the color palette looks really... Washed out? Yeah, it looks really washed out at first. I'm like, oh god, I hope the rest of the game isn't like this. And usually I don't really care about graphics and stuff in games, but it just looked really off to me. Uh, it got to a point where I, uh, I I checked out, you know, I checked out later into the game, and sure enough, after the conception happens and the game kind of gets a little more colorful, I guess it gets a little more cell shaded if you will, It uh, it looks a lot better, but, like, the font still looks a little weird. And some of the some of the HUD looks a little off, so that that's it's okay. Like it's so weird though because there are some parts of the games, like a lot of the battle stuff, looks so much better than the PS2 version. But then there's just other parts, like the font, just it looks like it's written in Sharpie. It's really off-putting. And then the weird thing is, and a lot of people, I I was wondering if it was just me, and I debated re-downloading the game, but other people seem to have this. Whenever you fuse a demon at the Cathedral of Shadows, the frame rate drops to, like, single digits. Ouch. Yeah. That's it's terrible. It's pretty bad. Um, so I'm like, fuck, because I have... I, I don't know which version I want to play through now, because I have my Nocturne PS2 save still, and it's further in, but then I have the PSN Classic version, and I'd rather just play it widescreen on my PS3, but... I don't know. Hopefully they patch it. I still think it's worth 10 bucks, even if it's not the best quality um because i mean even just, the frame rate thing it's only for the fusion animation it seems like so far but uh yeah buyer beware if that's off-putting to you like i heard about the uh the font thing i also heard there's like a way to make it look not as bad but i forgot what setting you had to adjust so oh can't help much <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll mess around with it there's not that many settings so hopefully i can get it looking looking fine but Man, it's yeah, it's really it's really weird. But I'm so hyped that we got Nocturne on PSN because there's a lot of people that don't have PS2s anymore or just never did and had PS3s. So yeah, cool. I've stuff. always wanted to play it, but I never got a chance. So I'm gonna try and pick it up soon. Yeah, it's 
It's a fun time. Be be like Uncle Rosin and play it on hard mode. Because that's what but I, I am. But casual scum. Oh, too busy holding cheese hand. Speaking of holding cheese <laughs> hand, I got a twenty dollars PSN card so I could download Persona Four too. Um, I, I la- I'm laughing because they said like three episodes ago, so I'm like, yeah, I'll wait till it goes down in price, and yeah, that didn't last long. Um, so yeah, I'll get back to everyone on how that version holds up too. So yeah, I guess enough enough of that SMT stuff in this SMT. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about let's talk about JoJo. So uh, JoJo's crazy tank. You are a guest. So do you want to start with your introduction to JoJo's? Like, where did it all start for you? The Capcom game. Like I was at a was at a friend's house and he had it on the PlayStation and we just started playing. Like I was like, it was just years ago. So I'm like, I didn't understand what was going on, but we just played. I'm like, this is really fun. And I looked into it and I realized this is a full thing and there's stuff that wasn't in the game. So I just could start reading it and reading it, and that's where it was, I guess. That's um very similar story to me. My friend had the Capcom fighting game. He had like all the Capcom fighting games on PS One. I think his dad, I, I, yeah, I think it was his dad, was just, like, a really big Capcom fan. So I'd always go over and play PS1, and they're, they'd just always be there. And we played JoJo's a lot. And I never, yeah, I never really realized either it was a part of a bigger franchise until way later on. And even then, I really didn't even look into it. I'm like, oh, this this looks like a cool thing. But I just kind of, I was like, this is some weird Japanese thing that I'll never understand. All I really knew about JoJo's from that point was Zawardo. And that that was all I knew for a while until I got into Persona and SMT and stuff. And I keep seeing people saying, you know what, if you like Persona, you'd probably like JoJo's because of stands and there's a lot of influence there. And in some cases, Persona even ripped off JoJo's and stuff like that. And trust me, we'll probably talk about that later. But I was like, you know what, I'll I'll give this a shot. So I started reading the manga because I know... People people told me just to watch the recent anime adaptation, but I'm like, you know what? I haven't read manga in like five, six years. Let, let me get back into the groove of things. So I started reading, and I immediately fell in love with Phantom Blood. I'm like, this is really good. I can't believe I haven't read this yet. So from there, I've been a fan. And now I'm, I'm a little bit into part four. I've read all through parts one and three, or one, two, and three, rather. So uh, I guess that does it for me. Katsu, what about you? It all started back in 2012 when the anime reboot happened. So it was very recent. My friends and I in an anime chat Skype group were talking about... Well, I wasn't even watching JoJo's yet. One guy was just talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and how much of an asshole this character called Dio was. I was like, (laughs) what are you talking about? Talks about how Dio killed JoJo's dog. And I'm like, really? Okay, I need to watch this. And that was the thing. That's what yes, that was the thing. I need to watch this thing where this dude's dog gets set on fire. <laughs> Jenny! <laughs> so, I started watching JoJo's, and it was... It was okay. Um, and it didn't really do anything to hold my attention yet, aside from Dio just being an asshole. And... So I I started watching it, and then other anime happened. I stopped watching it, and then... I think it was around the middle of Battle Tendency where I picked it back up and continued watching it. And, oh my god, I, I liked Battle Tendency much more than I liked Fans of Blood. Joseph is such a cool protagonist. And so once Battle Tendency was done, I was like, where, where, where do I go from here? I need, I, need to keep, I need to keep my JoJo groove going. <laughs> so I started reading, started reading Stardust Crusaders and then... Once well, so I got done reading Stardust Crusaders, I had I suffered through. Like this was around the time where all of us in in that anime Skype group started reading the JoJo manga, so we were reading it at the same time. After every part was done, we just talk about it. So we started reading Diamond is Unbreakable, and oh boy, oh my god, it was so terrible. All that duang, like I couldn't take it, but I, I somehow made made my way through Diamond is Unbreakable, and I think you mean that, Diamond is not Crash. Yeah, Diamond is not crashed. That's what I meant. But so, who face are you? <laughs> have a feel so complicated. <laughs> I need to read this at some point. I'm I'm reading the proper version, but I want to go back and read the Duwang is Unbreakable version at some uh, point. I, could, I have to. I could not fully read the Duwang. Is that not. bad? It it's starts that bad. bad. 
Like at the end, it's mostly coherent, but it's well, mostly. Yeah. Is, but at the beginning, it's as rough as anything. Yeah. So after Diamonds Unbreakable, Part Five and Part Five just had a really bad translation. I had no idea. What, I had no idea what Diavolo Stand did. I don't think anybody had any idea what Diavolo Stand did. <laughs> okay, I think I understand that to an extent. I mean, you guys see the Futurama episode where the time just keeps skipping and it keeps going ahead bit by bit. Yeah, yeah. it's like that. Like okay. basically, uh, it's like a very okay. basic thing like that. I. Uh, and then I read Stone Ocean. Stone Ocean was pretty amazing. Ha ha, time for heaven. And then part seven. Part seven is probably my favorite part, even though it does have my it doesn't have my uh, favorite protagonist. It has the and best then, name. Yeah, Steel, Steel Ball, Ball Rock. Rock. Such a great name. <laughs> and then and then I stopped reading after Steel Ball Run was completed, and then a few years later. I started reading Jojo Lion, and then I stopped Jojo Lion, and, and I'm probably just going to pick it up once it's done. And, yeah. All, all right, so um, that gives a brief summary of how we've all got introduced to Jojo's. I guess um, big thing to talk about real quick, bring it, bring it slightly back into the Mega Ten territory, is, um, well, I guess as a whole, Jojo has a pretty big cultural influence in Japan, it seems like. Um, it has a huge cultural influence in Japan. Big. Yeah, it, it seems to be like the like the Western equivalent would be Batman, where even if you don't read Batman or watch anything Batman related, you get the concept, you get the villains, you you understand kind of that universe, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like that seems to be kind of what JoJo's is like in Japan, where people will catch the references and jokes even if they haven't even bothered to read or watch JoJo's themselves. Uh, one, have you guys ever seen that YouTube video, man? I hope I can find this again, where it, it's it's on some street, but there's this TV display, and it keeps playing All-Star Battle character oh, trailers. Oh, yeah, all, all, yeah, the All-Star Battle PVs. Yeah, and, and just, like, you hear this, like, shriek. You see all the fangirls just going. Yeah, you hear fangirls just movie. splooshing as each character is shown on screen, and it's the best it's, video. I did see a video, like, I think it was, like, a couple years ago, where there's, like, a whole bunch of people in the street just... Like slowly, like air punching the grounds before the steamroller is going muda 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 over and over again. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, it was amazing. It was. I need to find this. I need to find this at some point. It was so good. During during the All Star Battle, like PVs they were showing on on the big TV. When when you hear each character show up, they just start the fan girls just started screaming their names, and it was just. It was nuts. It was crazy, because it was like a street, too, if I recall, right? Yeah, it was a street. Yeah, yeah. Like it was chaos. It was absolute chaos. Oh, man. Yeah, so JoJo seems to be pretty pretty huge. And I think a lot of people have kind of understood at this point that Personas, as a concept, probably came from stands. They had to have come from stands. There's no, no way. else they could have been. Yeah, because, you know, immediately, too, when I when I first played Persona 3, I was like, this is a really cool concept, because <laughs> this is this is kind of how I thought about it back then, just getting into Persona 3. I'm like, you know, it's kind of like Pokemon, except they're within you, and you can kind of shoot them out of you or whatever. They're, they're kind of like a weapon that can manifest for, like, a couple seconds and do something before they, you know, pop back in. And I was like, man, how did they come up with this? That's, I've never really thought of it. you read JoJo's. Yeah, they read JoJo's <laughs> seems to be the answer. Because... But it's, it's even more apparent in Persona 1 and Persona 2. They don't use something to invoke their personas. They just, they just call it out, kind of kind of like stands. Yeah, and then, of course, in Persona 3, uh, some people seem to think that in the beginning part of Stardust Crusaders, Jotaro shoots himself in the head, or tries it's to. It's a Persona. It's a Persona 3 reference, when in reality... Well, now I was going to say that that influenced Persona 3's um, evokers. That seems to be the general consensus. Uh, I'm not entirely... I'm half and half on that. I'm like, you know what, I I could see that, but at the same time, he's not really summoning Star Platinum by shooting himself in the head. He's kind of... Star Platinum... making a point. Yeah, exactly. So I can kind of see that. Um, Naturally, I can see someone... I can see someone on the Persona team being like, yo, we can we can change this and kind of morph into our own idea, but I'm not sure. 
but yeah, there definitely seems to be a lot of persona influence there. Uh, I don't know if we want to get into this now or not, but there's a let's lot. Wait on, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's wait. wait on the part stuff. Um, man, I guess we can just start getting into the parts now. So, guess we're gonna start out with part one, the part that started it all way back in I think it was '86. Phantom yeah, '86. A story about a gentleman, a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Joestar. Oh man! So overall consensus on Phantom Blood for me was. It felt kind of like, it felt kind of gimmicky in that it felt like a very st- stereotypical shonen type story, but they added it in some like vampire a... stuff to it and some kind of detective-y stuff to it. It's Hokuto no Ken plus Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> and it's surprisingly awesome. I really liked Phantom Blood just because of how, it's a, it's a very classic story, but they pull it off so well and so seriously that... It has this really weird sense of charm to it that I really like. Yeah. Um. I I just like when I was watching the Phantom Blood anime, well, just part one of JoJo's. Um. I think it was around like episode seven or eight when. I can't remember. It was when um. Jonathan defeated Dio for the first time. He he. St- put him on a stake and uh, his mansion was on fire. I think it was around when, when when I stopped watching it. And then I picked it back up and I started appreciating it a lot more all of a sudden. And I'm like, hey, this is actually pretty this is actually pretty decent. I mean it's not like Jonathan's a bad protagonist at all. I mean he's despite his massive his massive build, he's still pretty human. Which is pretty apparent when uh when um kind of lost my train of thought there. Uh, I can't even remember what I was saying before. You thought you were thinking of a thing, but you were thinking of Dio. Yes. That's yes, exactly I was thinking of Dio. Well, let you think, Crazy Tank. What did what did you think about um Phantom Blood as a whole? General thoughts. Um, I thought it was, I guess, pretty good would be the way to put it. I mean. I wasn't expecting anything mind blowing out of it, but it was still like a pretty good like it felt like as a lead into what could come it was good. Yeah. The anime yeah. was probably like I even tell people, hey, if you want yeah, better, like... you just anime it. It's a little faster. Like it just doesn't seem to drag yeah. at some points. I feel as if Phantom Blood is like this is the start of something great. That's what it kind of feels like. Yeah, this is so, this mm-hmm. is the start of something that could span across generations, which is exactly what happened. And I guess you could kind of argue that the Jonathan Dio rivalry pretty much sets the, the plot. Yeah, the, well, the tone and the plot of basically the uh, rest everything. of the parts, the rest of the series. Who would have thought one man could be such a dick that he influenced the entire <laughs> everything else? One drunken old bastard else. named Dario Brando. <laughs> Dario <laughs> literally changed the universe for the worst. Yeah, across generations. Across generations, Dio's influence is it's a, it's apparent in every single part. I'm not sure about Part Eight, but I'm pretty sure Part Eight has something related to Dio in there. Yeah, <laughs> um, that kind of is what set sets um everything up. So. I think, yeah, that, that's overall the general opinion on part one is it's good, but it's not amazing. It's not anything that's too mind-blowing on its own. It's just that it kind of leads into the awesomeness that is parts two and onward. So It's like the appetizer. Yeah. It, it's pretty short, too, both in the anime form and I guess the manga form. But I, I do like what you said. It does kind of drag on in some points. Like I know There's a part where Jonathan is recovering. And it seems kind of—it seems like it kind of drags there. Then there's the uh, the whole thing with Jonathan's tr- uh, testing his ripple powers with the wine. It, it felt like it kind of dragged there too. I yeah. think what it was for me was um, there's early on there's the Jonathan. Uh, is her name Arena? Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, the stuff with her where in the manga the relationship thing for that goes on. For quite a few chapters, and I think in the anime they cut it down to like two minutes worth of footage in yeah. that episode. I think it's like episode two. Yeah, or I think three. they just montaged it. Yeah, they mo- they made it a montage, and it 
it works so much better in that context. Um, it was aside from that though, I, I really like part one. I think yeah, that's general opinion. It's the appetizer. So moving on to the real the real meat, part two, battle tendency. Oh man, uh, battle tendency. Who wants to take the lead on this one? I just want to say it's a really awesome name before we actually get started. Yes. yes. Yeah, so, Battle Tendency is a pretty cool name. So much so that we, we named Season 2 of Cathedral of Shadows Podcast Tendency. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, I guess I'll, I'll start off by saying that I love how the contrast between the protagonists of Part 1 and 2, where Joseph yeah. is kind of a dick. That was like one of the best things. Because yeah. Jonathan is the most polite. He's basically Superman. Yeah, he's extremely polite, generous, a gentleman. Mm-hmm. He's and like then, the model gentleman. All of a sudden, you just get wise ass <laughs> Dick Joseph. Yeah, yeah, an American. He's pretty much a textbook American. My favorite, my favorite thing is kind of how they um, they kind of set up his character, and it's a flashback where he's part of a plane hijacking and he just doesn't give a fuck. He's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. And he's going to beat up everyone. It's like, you're in a plane hijacking. Like, (laughs) what are you doing? So yeah, like, Oh my God, it's so good how they lead everything in. Uh, I I don't know if anyone else thought this, but I thought straights was actually going to be the primary antagonist for the majority of part two. And then he, and then he dies in just a few chapters. Yeah. Um, crazy take actually. I think, I think you might have been the person I was talking to on Twitter when I was reading Battle Tendency. Did did you also forget that Straits was that dude from Part One? Yes. 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 I too. And it's like, oh, it's that guy. That's who they're talking. About. That's why I should know him because he did that one thing. I, I <laughs> did that thing. It's it's sad. I remember Dyer from Part One more than I remembered Straits. <laughs> I know because Dyer dies, so it's like, oh man. Yeah. He, it's like, oh man, what a guy, and then. And then straights, just in the background. I don't think yeah. straights does anything except fight off, fight off like a few background zombies. Yeah, that's it. He really doesn't do anything. <laughs> but then, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I helped out your your grandfather and all this other stuff. I'm like, oh, who? And I'm like, oh, it's straights. Yeah, you're that other guy that tagged it. along for a bit towards the end. <laughs> so. Oh, it's, you're it's, there just to quit the other half of the reference. Yeah, straights you're here is, just. To... Straight, tie everything together. Straits is redeemed though because he is the one that coins the term "space ripper stingy eyes," which is the yes. best name for an eye <laughs> laser move ever. <laughs> it's uh, so ridiculous. It's so good. I love how they it's, keep they keep that in all the dubs too. It's always space yeah. ripper stingy eyes because they know. They know they how know ridiculous it. it is. I think it's that in uh, All Star Battle as well when uh, yeah. Dio uses it. It is. Um, and it's so fantastic. Um, but yeah, I guess the stuff with, I guess from there they kind of move into, um, it's Santana, right? As the first Pillarman. Yeah. 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 So they move into that and then it kind of sets up the whole Pillarman stuff with all of them. And then I guess you kind of get the Caesar Joseph rivalry, which I think is kind of looking back on it. I didn't really realize this at the time, but looking back, I think the Joseph Caesar friendship slash rivalry going on was why I liked part two so much. Yeah, they were pretty cool dudes. Yeah. Um, man, Caesar as a whole, he's such an interesting character because you kind of has have this whole thing where they're kind of comparing the situation from part one where Caesar's like, my grandfather was a cool dude, and he died protecting your grandfather, and that's bullshit, and I'm not going to die protecting you, and all this other stuff, and yeah, then you finally get the point where history kind of repeats, but it's done so well, because it, it's a major point of, I guess, coming of age for both of the characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they really mature at that point. Yeah. It's a shame that Caesar's, like, the last Zeppelin you see in any for of the parts. Like, until part it's seven, incredibly long time, yeah. Until until they get to Gyro, there's not a single Zeppeli there. Yeah. Anyone have anything else to say about part two? Joseph uh, and Drag was Pillar- funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joseph and Drag, and I like how when he steals the guy's uniforms, like the uniform magically fits him perfectly. That's Always found that to be ridiculous. I think the German science. Yes. Yeah, German thank, science. Thank God for Guile, the Nazi doctor. 
Yeah. Um, one thing one thing I forgot about Stroheim is that he goes from being the most like evil villain ever to suddenly just he becomes this awesome robot of goodness. And everyone seems to just kind of forget the fact that um there's that one scene early on where they're introducing him where he goes, Okay, Mexican slave people, uh we're we we need one of you to uh give us blood. Then that one kid says, Oh, I'll give you blood and he's like, Okay, kill everyone but that kid. <laughs> yeah. And that they immediately <laughs> just slaughter yes. a good twenty and... Mexican slaves. <laughs> I remember that, and I'm like, I don't think I should be laughing at this, but I kind of am. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of corny. Uh, but, like, <laughs> everyone seems to forget that happened, because immediately Stroheim is just everyone's best friend after that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love, too, how he pretty much blows up after the Santana fight, and he's like, no, I'm a robot now, fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck you guys. You'll never get enough of Stroheim. Oh, man. I also like kind of... I feel like Iraqi kind of was like, eh, but he's still a Nazi. So then so then at the end of part two, they kind of have that little page where it's just like, what happened to everyone after part- battle tendency? And it's just like, Stroham died in Stalingrad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I still think it was a missed opportunity not having him in All-Star Battle. Yes. Yeah. He would have been. You know awesome. who we know who we forgot to talk about in part one. Who forgot to talk Speed about Speedwagon? Uh, even Speedwagon is afraid that we stop talking about him. Man, Speedwagon's cool. Speedwagon does yeah. nothing, but he acknowledges he does nothing, so I'm okay with him. Yeah. Speedwagon is probably one of the coolest characters in JoJo's. He has the one fight scene, but he's just such a cool dude. Yeah. I guess we could talk about him part two as well because his alleged death kind of starts off the. Starts off the plot, even though he's still alive, and such. yeah, even though he's still alive, the alleged death of Speedwagon. <laughs> yeah, and he he allegedly starts well, not allegedly, he does start this amazing foundation of this. It's basically Shield from from Marvel, but it's called the Speedwagon Foundation. Oh God, I'm never. Gonna, like, we're not going to put that connection together now. Yeah. Yeah, it's an organization dedicated for helping the Joe Star bloodline. Not really, but they kind of do anyway. It's basically, it's basically, hey, we need, we need someone to get medical treatment, or we need some excuse for something. Let's call the Speedwagon Foundation. They'll solve everything that the main characters can't. Uh, which is actually kind of genius because that um that helps them a lot with um. Uh, I guess going slightly into part three, we're like they kind of have to leave Holly behind to go kill Dio. They're like, yeah, we'll leave him with Speedwagon Foundation people. They'll be fine, or she'll be fine. So yeah. Oh man, that that's really cool. But I, I guess um, I kind of want to talk about the Pillarmen more overall. How would you guys feel about the Pillarmen? Um, I'm, I honestly don't remember how I felt about SEDC, but I did like the others. Yeah. Well, that's, well Santana's just kind of Santana, but that's it. Cars was cool. Oh yeah, Cars especially was... like his names. Yeah. Well, I, I I really Santana and ACDC are kind of forgettable for me. The only thing I really remember about ACDC was that he cries to relieve stress or something, and I yeah. think that was oddly hilarious. Um, yeah, for some odd reason, he's in All Star Battle. It's like it's like another contrast thing where after how honorable and straight to battle and thing that Wham like that Wamu is just all of a sudden you just get crying. I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh man, that's the other thing too. Wham versus Wamu. I can't believe they couldn't have just somehow made that Wham. Just like take out the H or add two M's. Well, I believe it actually yeah. is Wamu to be technical. That's I just keep making that mistake myself. Oh I'm... really? Yeah. Oh okay. Well, so I... it is supposed to be Wamu. Yeah, I never knew that. <laughs> um, All right then. So w- one thing that I, I find really interesting too is that. You have Wamu kind of set up as God. It's going to be weird calling him that from now on. I need to, I need to auto correct myself. Damn it. Um, hey, I'm still making a mistake, and I know what it is. Yeah, it's the worst part. Um, j- just like how for a while I couldn't cap, I couldn't stop calling straight Strazo, even though I knew it was wrong. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, going going back to the Pillarmen, 
Yeah, the first two kind of forgettable for me, but for Wamu, I find it interesting how how much of like a warrior he is through and through, even to the point where I think there's a point where he's like, you know what, fuck you, cars. Like I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with you on something towards towards his death or something. Or cars is like, what are you doing? And Wamu is like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna be honorable till the end or something like that. And then I think that's kind of cool about cars too, is where he comes off as really honorable and fair at first but then towards the end when he gets the ultimate form and shit he's like you know what fuck you i'm playing dirty i'm just gonna rule the world now <laughs> like he just totally yeah, look at my squirrel. yeah he just totally betrays his principles um man and also that death holy shit that's probably the most horrifying it's not even a death is that's the scary part he he gets launched into space and is just stays there forever forever that's horrifying. Until he stops thinking. Uh, Poor bastard. Yeah. Uh, makes you wonder what... Um, I'll, I'll come back to this thought, actually, when we get to six. Okay. Um, it's not related, but just it's like a what-if kind of thought I'm having. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, also, how did you guys feel about... Did you guys... Were you guys tricked? Did you think Joseph was dead at the end of two? When I first read it, I... Thought so only because of precedent. Yeah, yeah. Like that was the thing with me. I'm like, I know that I know that he's in part three and he's an old man because of the PS1 game. So I know he can't be dead. So like, I forgot all about that at that point when I was actually reading. Like, oh wait, whoa, what? Yeah, because because part one, it's like holy shit, he's not afraid to kill off the main character. Fuck. Yeah. Um, he's not afraid to do other things to the main character either, as three shows. <laughs> yeah. Like, making him a cheating old dirty bastard. Yeah. Actually, that's part four more so, but... Um, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, I don't know, Battle Tendency is great. I, I I heard that the anime's ending is actually better than the manga's ending, because he's... Apparently, he was really pushed for time. He's, like... Apparently, the editors at the time really wanted him to just move on to part three, or something, or he had limited... He had limited chapters left in the volume or something like that. So apparently the anime actually expands the epilogue and makes it a bit more fleshed out. So that's cool. Uh, any closing thoughts on part two from either of you or are we good to move on? Shout out to the squirrel that Cars uses at the end. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best. I can't keep saying it. Like I have to just make it clear. Crazy squirrel, man. <laughs> I always forget about that. Yes. It's so weird. Okay, I, I guess then going into part three, I think this is the part that everyone, even those that don't really know about JoJo's, they know part three because Aura Aura and stands and the world and all that crazy shit. And it's the only one that came to America. Mm-hmm. That's definitely the only one that had any American release for quite some time. Oh, man. Like... It's so weird because even in bookstores and stuff too, I vaguely recall seeing JoJo volumes and stuff there. Even as a yeah. kid, like they just kind of always were there. I don't know how many people bought them, but because of all the because co- of all the copyright stuff, they probably had the probably didn't release it in that many quantities. Well, did you know They're that printing? I think actually, right now. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Apparently, the reprints are actually somewhat censored. Yeah. Uh, well, I know the originals were a little bit censored for the U.S. But I'm not oh, sure if they really. changed the reprint though. Um, yeah, I, like, um, I think some scenes with, with uh, animals were changed with the, to rats. Oh, because... Some of the scenes where they were fighting on mosques were changed, I know yeah, that. that that's, yeah, I remember that. Okay, yeah, I think I think that was... Oh, okay, so that was even back then? I thought that was with the recent reprint. No, that was back then. Oh, okay, yeah, because yeah. I, I know I read that some of the um, fight scenes were a little trimmed down, or they had to be redrawn because there were mosques being destroyed and defaced and stuff, and... Apparently, they didn't want to raise any controversy with that, which, given recent political tensions and such, <laughs> makes some sense, but it's always a shame when that has to happen. Uh, yeah, part three. Um, part three is part three the longest part. I think it is offhand. I could be wrong. Um, I think four is actually, like, uh, the, I'm not sure if seven actually changed the number of pages in a chapter, because I'll explain that like, a little bit later why I haven't gotten that far yet, but I know stuff of it. But um, three, five, and six are like 150 something, and then I believe four is 170. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because part three, part three is 
Part three is really long. long. Yeah, and I th- I think it's the first one that really gives you that feeling of it being an adventure because Battle Tendency. Well, first of all, Phantom Blood feels more like a detective vampire type story thing. It doesn't really feel like an adventure. Part two kind of feels more like a world traveling tournament thing with the uh, way the pillar men are set up. And then part three is just straight up. We're starting in Japan. We're going to make our way to Egypt. Whatever it yep. takes. Uh, and then I guess it introduces the concept that everyone knows and loves and is stood, stood around forever. <laughs> stood. Ah, see what I mean. <laughs> uh, stands. Which yeah, stands. Yeah, are the greatest thing ever. So, oh man, uh, out of curiosity, did did everyone here? I'm yeah, everyone here. I'm assuming started with part one, but part three for a lot of people was where JoJo was. It was their entry point because that was just yeah. all they had. Um, man, I don't know. I I feel like I don't I don't know where to start off. Does anyone else want to take the reins real quick with part three thoughts? Uh... Let's talk about the protagonist of Part 3, because he's pretty different from Jonathan and Joseph. He's 17 years old, and he's built like a tower. I could not believe that. I thought he was like 25, and he's like, no, he's 17. I'm like, what? He's 17, he's a high schooler. (laughs) And he smokes. Yes. It's a hilarious... They had to to censor him because he he was 17 and he was smoking. I think, like, um... I think I read on Twitter that, like, apparently on, a daytime TV in Japan, you can't have high schoolers smoking at a certain time. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so that's where that hilarious awkward shadow came from. Oh, that makes sense. They didn't, they didn't censor it out full, fully because they knew fans would have a sheer heart attack if they tried to do that. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> can, I, can, I say, can I say real quick that um, I really like how they censor things in the daytime versions of the recent anime adaptation because yeah they just put in shadows the blood is still there it's just not the wounds themselves they're just covered yeah. in shadows i love that i feel it's much more obvious in season two than it ever was in season one and one got pretty bad at times as well but then you got like the uh the gray fly episode where where like the guy in the he's just wearing like the robe at that point and it's just going back yeah. and forth bobbing his head around but you can't see his tongue it's yeah. like you see a giant shadow on his face. I'm just laughing so hard. Because the, the shadows are coming from nowhere. Nothing is causing them. They're just there. They're just there. Good old David production censoring. Uh, I, I love it, though. Oh, man. Actually, one thing I want to say about Part 3. Did it bother you guys, too, in the manga, how Dio's face is just covered in shadow, but it just looks like he, he has, like, black ink on his face at some point. Yeah, yeah. Like no how it just looks like a literal slate of a face with no feature on it. Yeah, he looks like Slenderman at some points. So I'm like, isn't okay. that Isn't that, like, isn't that a palette for uh, All-Star Battle? Yeah. I believe it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know what campaign wow. you can unlock it in, but I believe it is. It is. I've seen video, and it looks really fucking weird in there, too, because it, it's not even a shadow, even though he's technically Shadow Dio or whatever. Like, it's just this black circle on his face that covers up his features. It's really weird. See, at least the Capcom gave you the move set. Yeah, that's true. That actually, I think that's the best it ever looked, because his hair kind of covers it there more realistically. Whereas in other stuff, maybe it's because it's in 3D or it's just higher detail. You can just kind of see it's like, okay, there's nothing making that shadow. It's just pitch black for no reason. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, but <laughs> Dio is, I think, half of the fun of Part 3. Yeah. Like, this, this... He doesn't even do much for most of it, but he's still half the fun. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's the weird part. Just that build-up to that final battle is just so great, and then... Yeah. I think from the point where Polnareff is trying to walk up the stairs to get him, and he keeps somehow walking back, and he's like, what the fuck is going on, to the Kakyoin fight and just everything. It it just completes the experience, because it's like, holy shit, we've spent god knows how many volumes. All this time trying to get to this man, and he's a threat. Yeah, and he's a badass. So One thing that actually I think is kind of funny is that... um. Uh, someone I know pointed this out, is technically the, the villain with the highest body count, uh, at least in terms of main characters, is actually Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice, really? Yeah, because Dio only kills Kakyoin. Oh, yeah, How he many does. people does Vanilla Ice kill? He kills Iggy? He kill... 
right? And Ab- he kills Iggy, Abdul. Yeah, yeah. Just, just those two. I think Poochie might technically have a higher count. Yeah, than that. yeah, actually. Yeah, oh, I, me- I meant of, I meant of just the part three. Oh, okay. Islands. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll explain why Poochie has a higher uh, <laughs> yeah. body count later. Yeah, that's a fun story. Oh man, so. But I yeah, love that. Um, in reading one, one to three in order, like I did at one point, it was like, not only did it show they're not that they're not afraid to kill off the main character in one, they're not afraid to drag his body back and totally repurpose it. Yeah. Okay. One thing that no one ever explains is, at the end of part one, Arena and Lisa, Lisa, and actually, I think, yeah, because Joseph isn't born at that point, so Arena and Lisa, Lisa, and I guess fetus version of <laughs> Joseph. Are... Well, not Joseph, but George. Oh, yeah, George. I forgot. It's, yeah, because stuff happens with that. Man, it'd be cool if they had a spinoff manga involving George. But They had a spinoff uh, novel involving George. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> I will, too. I knew I knew there was a Dio one. I never knew that. Uh, I know there's, like, a Dio one and there's a Kira one. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know there was a Kira one, either. Man, I need to look all these up, so... Oh, man, though, but... No one ever explains this, because Arena and whoever, they all ex- they all escape in that coffin, and then apparently what happened... This is the only way I can work this out in my head. Dio, while underwater, somehow cut off Jonathan's head, put his head onto his body, was able to somehow crawl all the way to wherever the coffin was in the ocean open up the coffin, close the lid, and just rest until some unfortunate sailors found it about a hundred years later. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened either. Maybe it's explained yeah. in the Dio novel. That's that'd probably be the only place they could explain it, if anything. Yeah. I actually haven't even checked out, like, if anyone translated or not. I just know it's a thing. Uh, it, it got translated recently, um... I saw it on the JoJo subreddit. Someone's like, "Hey, I translated this. It's out now." So that was like a few months ago, actually. So it's pretty, it's pretty recent. Uh, I think I have it downloaded somewhere. I just haven't read it yet. Um, what's it? Uh, is it's called Dio something in Heaven, right? I think. Oh uh, yeah, Dio from Over Heaven. Yeah, that's oh, there it. There we go. That's it. Yeah. Um, but man, uh, have Dio you seen is... New Iraq? Have you seen Ooh. New Iraqi Dio? Looks so different. Looks so weird. I'm not New, used to that. New Iraqi Jotaro is the one that always gets to me because it's like, man, he used to be so buff and Fist of the North Star looking, and, and now, now he looks younger. He, he does. He now looks he like he's looks like seven, looks seventeen. He looks now. like he would be seventeen. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it's so weird because like the new version of Jotaro, like, because I guess there's the thing where it's like, where does his hat start and his hair end or whatever? It yeah. looks really weird in the new art style because. It still is like conjoined, but it just looks all like pastel-y and weird. But oh man, uh, God, part three is so great though. Just there's a point too that got me really hyped where they started kind of running out of Arcana to name stands after. So they brought in like, yeah, fuck it, let's just bring in nine Egyptian gods and <laughs> they'll yeah. they'll be in Egypt. So I'm like, man, that's cool. So it was just like, yeah, we're out of Arcana. Let's just. Throw some like, in. Draw another card. There are no other cards, sir. <laughs> we can't pull a Persona 3 and make an Aeon, and we can't make a Hunger or whatever the fuck they did in Persona 4 Golden. <laughs> we can't just make up tarot cards. Uh, fuck it, bring in Egyptian gods. Then if that fails, I'll go back to metal bands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they eventually yeah, did. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that, that's the other thing I guess we should point out, is that Part of the reason that JoJo just hasn't had much success in Western markets is because of all the goddamn car- copyright infringement that the series is so bad with. Yeah, like copy Japanese copyright is extremely lax. You it's you could tell it is because all those goddamn dojins exist. See, the weird thing is, with any other writer, I'd be like, "This is unoriginal bullshit. You're just naming all of your characters and whatever." You're naming everything off of other stuff that already exists. It's not even really a shout out at that point. You're just ripping it off. But it's Iraqi, and he's one of the most creative writers I think I've ever known. And I, I think it's because it's been happening since part one. It's like such gradually happening until yeah. four of the uh, came. Not gradual at all. 
<laughs> it's like, you just get used to it. He's like, you know what, fuck it, I'll just do it with everything. <laughs> I imagine as soon as iTunes became a thing, Iraqi was like, yo, unlimited possibilities, just got out the... Unlimited notebook. possibilities. Got out the notebook, started finding bands, he's like, okay, part eight protagonist. His he was even finding more, he was finding more and more bad, not just bands, but rappers too, because of Notorious B.I.G. in part five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I, I always laughed at how there was a stand after Limp Biscuit later on down the road, too. Yeah. yeah. There's Bohemian Rhapsody, too, and Metallica. Oh, man. There's quite a bit of Queen, actually, throughout all of it, I think. Yeah. I think that's the one that's probably probably gets the most naming. Actually, you, you brought this up the other day, too, um, Crazy Tank, with the world. He has diving tanks on his back. Cause yes, whole... I only just noticed this a little while ago, but... He totally has two diving tanks on his back. Holy and... dive. Huh? <laughs> it's like, when you already have one namesake going on for the person who controls that, I feel like I just missed a big Holy Diver reference for all this time. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, I never really... I didn't even think those were diving tanks. I don't know why. I just thought it was like some weird backpack thing until you pointed that I'm like, oh shit, you're right. That's a Holy Diver reference if I've ever seen one. Um... Man, part three is great. I, I think I liked Battle Tendency more of what I've read, but I, re- I really had a fun time with Stardust Crusaders. I think at some point it gets a little slow, but l- like all of the stuff with Oingo Boingo, I just did not care for. It's like these, this is really fucking weird. Yeah, the Oingo Boingo stuff just felt like it was there just for sake of padding the length out a little. Well, you know what I thought was really weird too, and I kind of think this goes against some parts of JoJo. Where uh, is Oingo the kid, right? Um, is this? I, I get those two confused all the time. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. This Oingo's is. the dude. Oh, Oingo's, Oingo's the, guy? the adult. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Then, then they get to the point where it's it's the chapter, or I guess the the volume kind of that focuses on Boingo and Whole Horse, and it goes something at the end like, and then Boingo uh, changed his ways and became a better person, and all that other stuff. I'm like, oh, that's really nice. And then the next page it goes, uh, just kidding, that usually doesn't, that's not how it happens in real life. And it was just like this really weird cynical message that Iraqi threw in. I'm like, this goes against like everything else you've ever written. It's really weird. Um, Iraqi must have been going through a rough patch when writing that chapter. <laughs> yeah, apparently, because I don't remember what happens, but like so all of a sudden, like, he gets attacked or he gets hit by a... It's something really weird, but something really bad happens to Boingo. And it's like, ah, people don't work work like that in real life. And it's like, oh. 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 Yeah, Rocky must have been going through something. Actually, here's a thing that that never really bothered me, but I saw someone, I think it was on a YouTube video, someone pointed this out, uh, and they said they had a problem with Stardust Crusaders because... uh, I guess the group kind of leaves a lot of enemy stand users just incapacitated, but they don't really kill them or imprison them or any way. Like in a few weeks, they'll be fine and causing trouble again. Was that did that ever bother well, you guys? It's kind of considering how most of them probably had like Dio's bud thing planted in them, they'd probably just die anyway. Yeah, because they've made it pretty clear being that usually if you try to take out, it'll just kill you. Yeah, so that's yeah. true. Probably just die anyway. Or they'll just end up like, uh, they'll just end up like that guy in part four, which we'll get to eventually. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, here's what happened to Boingo. He gets attacked by a dog. That's it, okay. Yeah, because it's like, just kidding. Evil people don't immediately change and have life become better for him right away. It was just like, Iraqi, what the fuck are you smoking? But I guess you could say that for a lot of things in JoJo's. Um,. That was really weird, though. Oh, I, I guess while we're on it, how did you guys feel about going from other Part 3 stuff? How have you guys... How did you guys feel about the game? Because overall, I think it's pretty fun. What, the Part 3 I, game? Yeah. I never played the Part 3 game. Are we talking about the SNES one? I don't know. Oh, that's a thing, too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Have, have either of you played that? Nope. I know there's a translation patch, because... Actually, before I even before I even really read JoJo's, because I check Aeon Genesis's site every once in a while, and I'm like, man, please be SMT if information. Please be SMT if information. And then it's uh, one day it's just like, hey, I released a patch for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Super Nintendo, and I'm like, 
what the fuck is this? Um, I've been meaning to play it because I'm not sure if it's... I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know if it's good or if it's horrible or whatever. I really only know it exists. Same. Uh, man, I should... I really need to play that at some point. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess Crazy Tank, you and I are alone on this. Uh, you, I'm assuming you liked the, the fighting game too because I think that was both kind of our introduction. Oh yeah. Like, I really enjoyed it. Um, After I played it, on my friend's PlayStation, and after I read, like, 1 through 3, that just stopped for reasons I'll get to, I, um, I ended up just, like, emulating it eventually later on down the road. And then it's, like, HD version. Like, I didn't ask for it, but I'll buy it. And I played it, and it's like, this is awesome. The HD filter isn't really HD at all, but this is still fun. Yeah. Until I went online, the netcode was garbage. Yeah, that that kind of sucks. Um, Because my friend got it, and that that's actually what stopped me from getting it, because... Two of my friends had it, and we were trying to play that online, and I think it might be, like, a 18-block difference between the two houses, and they were trying to net play it, and I was there, and it was... Both their internet is pretty good, and I was just watching it, and it, it dropped down really heavy in frames a lot, and I'm like, holy shit, this, this is not the best port. I think I've only had one match where it was a crystal clear connection. Ouch. Just one. And every other one, I still pop it in from time to time thinking, maybe I'll find something good. And no, it's usually someone from Japan, so it's going to be awful because the netcode is garbage. Yeah. That's the other thing, too. There's so many god-tier Japanese players that have probably been playing since it came out in arcades. <laughs> like, they're, holy shit, some of those players are just amazing. And it's like, as soon as you see the little Japanese flag pop up with their uh, online, it's like, oh shit, I'm going to get my ass kicked. Um it's... It's not a reassuring sign. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I really... It's such a good game, though, but I feel kind of bad because that HD version kind of seemed to come out before the JoJo boom that's kind of been happening the last year. Yeah, it, it was like the yeah, calm like, before the storm. Yeah. Storm. Like, it's out of nowhere. Like what I know that um the anime and uh, All-Star got announced around the same time, but um when did... When did they announce the HD one? Well, that's the it was thing. like a year before. They announced it, and no one really paid attention. Then they released it, and people still did not pay attention. What I remember I th- it came out around 2012, but I just don't remember exactly when in 2012. It was the November. It was November, I recall. Because um, I remember, I think Darkstalkers Resurrection released that summer, and Capcom, that was when Capcom went out and said... Well, you guys have been asking for Darkstalkers forever. We finally released it, and no one bought it. So, thanks a lot, guys. And then later that year, they released JoJo's, and once again, no one bought it. And Capcom's like, "Okay, what the fuck, guys?" <laughs> um, which I then Darkstalkers JoJo... was 2013, though. Oh, it, I feel like it was after Darkstalkers. So yeah, it might be. It might have been 2013 at that point. Like I think Darkstalkers actually came after JoJo's. I'll have to double check that real fast. Oh, but I know I know Capcom went out and said that JoJo's did not make money back. Oh no! Like no one bought no one bought that. No one knew it existed because it was. It also hurt that they couldn't get it for any lower price. So they said twenty was the lowest they were able to swing. That <laughs> that, that really say something. Um, um, yeah, um, Resurrection was, a uh, March 2013. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so I, I screwed those two up, but I, I do know that Capcom went out and said that JoJo's did not sell well, and then Darkstalkers also did not sell well, and I think those, that was, like, a quick one-two punch for yeah, Capcom HD me. ports. Like, I really want more Darkstalkers, we're not gonna get it, but they did the wrong way of getting interest, but this is that episode. Yeah. I'll save my ranting for some other time, I guess. <laughs> So Twitter, and then I do agree with you then, that, that Darkstalkers plan wasn't the best. They didn't and then the JoJo it. anime, then the JoJo anime happened, and then around that time All Star Battle happened, and all the hype started happening. And then when All Star Battle came, well, we'll talk about All Star Battle way later. Oh, I was about to get ahead of myself. Yeah, but that, that's the thing I kind of want to point out too is this this weird sort of JoJo boom in the West has just kind of occurred since the 2012 anime adaptation and i didn't even really know about it but just i i kept having people i guess you could kind of say i kind of i think i was affected by people that caught themselves up in the whole jojo boom that kind of made me get dragged into it because 
just so many people were like, you would love JoJo's, go read it, and I finally did. But I didn't even realize how how popular it was getting until I started like looking up more and more. And even I think one of the mods on the JoJo subreddit was some said something like, "We've quadrupled in size in the past like six months." Like it's really crazy how how fast JoJo's is getting popular in the West. I mean, even the fact that All Star Battle and shit, and I guess the Crunchyroll. Uh, yeah, the Crunchyroll thing was big for them. Like I know people were yeah. like, like haven't even heard it before. Like, oh my, what's this? What's this? The fact they can even bring that stuff over is amazing, because that would not have happened a few years ago. Well, they still yeah, change the names of the subtitles most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but like, just the fact we get it at, at all is like, holy shit, that's it's so weird it's to think about. amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I guess... Makes you wonder what they're going to... No, oh, never mind. I was going to say something, but I'll, I'll wait until we get to that part. Okay, uh, I, the last part three thing... Uh, have either of you watched the OVA series? Yes. I've watched bits of the OVA series, and I watched the abridged series. <laughs> I watched the, the whole thing series. dubbed, and I watched it abridged. I, you know what the sad thing is? I've watched the... Well, okay, this is the weird part. Quick history lesson. So, in about... I think it was 1996, they made a Stardust Crusaders OVA, and it was... if I want I want to say it was six episodes... It was six or seven. I remember one that was six and one was seven. I think I know the sec. I know the one that came first was the shorter. So yeah, it was six episodes, but it was only an adaptation of the second half of the series. And they then literally just started in the desert. Like, hey, there's Iggy with no exposition. Nothing. You have no idea who these people are. How or they what got in the desert? Are. You have just... no idea of anything. You're expected to know everything going in. It's very specifically made for fans, um, and just um, like... American JoJo fans in 1996. <laughs> yeah, but they're just like, hey, here's um, here's the uh, here's whatever. the everything. The, the second half of part three, go have fun. And then in 2000, apparently they're like, eh, maybe we should have done the first half. So this is this is hilarious. I don't know if you guys know this. In Japan, the second OVA series, which is actually a prequel, which is the first half, was called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure: Colon Adventure. <laughs> 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 this is the best name, but so. Um, see, at least when America got, we got all one shot. So they just dubbed it all at once, and they yeah. said, "Here's the order." But then you notice, wait, the quality it was drops. The quality <laughs> quad drops. Um, yeah. So then finally, when they dubbed it over, I think it was like two thousand one or yeah, I think it was two thousand one. They dubbed it yeah. over, and they're just like, ah, fuck it, let's just release it all in chronological order. So at episode eight, there's just this noticeable drop in quality, and it's like, what the fuck happened? And it's like, yeah, five years of animation <laughs> change <laughs> happened. Uh, they just did bites the dust, but actually went forward instead. Yeah, so uh, I, I will admit the only stuff of the OVA I've seen is I saw I watched the first episode chronologically of the du- yeah okay first episode of the dub last episode of the dub actually they cut so much out of that whole thing though but that's what happens we try to put something as long as part three into thirteen episodes oh, yeah um man I I I, I, pla- I fully intend on watching that at some point and. Oh my god, though, like, I think that OVA is, like, half the reason the world and Muda Muda and Ora 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 and shit are memes. Yeah. And also, you gotta give a shout-out to the superior voice acting in part in that OVA. <laughs> that kind of cements the what point. What did you do just now? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Everyone that listened to this to the intro for this episode will know the the gloriousness of the, that OVA's voice acting. It's so bad. Well, I okay. guess you're standing you know, all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part where Dio is laughing at the end, like I I've ruled over the human race, and now you will all bow to me, the great Dio. And he says like I Dio, and like all this other. He refers to himself in the third person so so much in like the span of two minutes, and it's like. Okay, dude, calm down. <laughs> and I like how they just... The, uh, I like how they, they do that in the abridged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the abridged. Curry voice, so it's amazing. The abridged yeah. series for that is so good. I, I usually don't like abridged series, but the one for that OVA is just so funny. My friend was like, you need to watch this. I'm like, no, abridged series are 
crap, I, I hate all of them. And he's like, no, this one is actually really funny. And yeah, that was, <laughs> I, I had a good laugh out of that one. Um, I, the questions and answers yeah. episode was amazing. Yeah. Because like, Nigel Thornberry, do I sound like Tim Curry to you? And they keep, there's like a whole bunch of Tim Curry characters just keep saying, no, I don't hear it. There's even a pot of curry that comes up, I don't hear a thing. See, the weird thing is, too, is I haven't seen the actual OVA series, but I've seen all of the abridged series, so... You've seen all you need to see. Yeah, exactly. That's all you need to see. I like how they put the Polnareff fight on the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they'll consolidate points as well, like, throughout the thing. They'll just, like, take things just smash them together a few times. <laughs> yeah, but, this uh, is kind of part three. Enya as well. Like, they made the whole Enya thing, like, a much larger, grander scale. <laughs> oh, man. So and yeah, then, since the horse never appeared in the second half. They just killed him the first. <laughs> oh, whole horse! Oh man, I guess that kind of wraps up part three. There's nothing else I can really think of to bring up. I yeah, mean, either. I guess yeah. the, the current anime adaptation right now is really fucking good. Yeah, I swear. I swear they're probably like, oh, what? What happened? Um, I remember on um, like in the actual. Part manga for three one uh Volner first meets Dio and there's like that random bird on Dio's shoulder. They oh, yeah. made that they made that pet shop in the show. Yeah, I noticed that too. That was yeah, really cool. Yeah, they made cool. that pet shop. That was super cool. And thinking if the changes they're going to make are changes like that, I am perfectly fine with this. That's yeah. the weird thing too. I I think I'm liking the anime better than the manga. I swear, there's some parts in the anime they just like take take screenshots from the manga and just color over it. Yeah, it's so, it's so good. So good. Don't do it. Um, man, like I love it. Just especially with um, uh, I don't know, but the voice they have for Dio, Jotaro, it, pretty much everyone's voice I think is just spot on. And I will say, generally, I prefer my Japanese stuff with an English dub. I I don't think JoJo's works dubbed. I think the only way you can have JoJo's and have it be as awesome as it is is if if it stays in the original Japanese. Like, or if they get Cam Clark to voice Dio. <laughs> I was thinking I'm like my head cannon. I was thinking they need to get someone like Samuel L. Jackson for Dio. Yeah. You just have him say motherfucker every few every few lines. Instead of I Dio, just say motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do want to say real quick, the, the, the dude who does who did the dub for um Dio in the OVA, that was the only anime adaptation or that was the only anime voice voice work he's ever done, ever. Yeah. He's like, gonna play Dio, that's it. I'm done with my career. Apparently he's done video game stuff since then, like every once and again, like every couple of years he'll do a video game thing. I think he's in a, he's in quite a few Star Wars games, it seems, but I thought that was really weird. And apparently he's a DJ or some shit. So <laughs> DJ Dio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, man, I wonder. Yeah, like, I wonder if he gets recognized for that, or if anyone ever talks to him about it. Just hey, remember that one thing you did, like early two thousands, Dio. Uh, you know what was his name? Um, Marlon James Dio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, I think that. Yeah, I think that wraps up part three. Finally. Uh, actually, one more thing. I think oh, I've man. said that eight times. Do you think they're going to be able to do part three at the rate at the rate they're going? Do you think it's going to be done by the end of this season? No, it's just going to go all the way in the fall. Will. Yeah, I don't think they'd be able to get it all within twenty four. I think they'd be like just missing the cutoff a little bit, but yeah. I doubt they'd be able to do it all. Because like, maybe they'll cut some of the minor things like Kenny G. If they cut stuff like that. That sure, but. I don't know if they actually would. Cause that's that's what I'm thinking because they seem to be keeping every single stand, and it, it feels like they're doing one stand an episode. So it's about one volume an episode, and I think part three is twenty five volumes. But sometimes stand like there's two stands a volume, and it gets a little more complicated. And the Dio fight is like three fucking volumes. Uh, man, I don't. I don't really know what they're going to do because I feel like the only way this can play out in my head is they do all of the Arcana stands in the 24 episodes and then they have the other half of the se- they have the half the first half of next season 
be all of the Egyptian god stands and then maybe have the second half be all the stuff in Dio's castle with Pet Shop and Iced and Dio and whatever. I, I don't know how that's going to pan out. I'm really curious to see what they do. Yeah. There's not even an episode guide. I don't think there's an episode guide anywhere. I don't think so. Like, um, I know my anime was currently saying there's 24 episodes slated, but I think that they might be the only place actually saying a number, so I don't even know. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see how that plays. Or unless, like, or unless they're going to start doing, like, hour-long episodes for, like, the last few. Oh, God. I was thinking that, too. Maybe they just resort to, like, here's this, and then we either do, like, an OVA series or movies to close everything up. But I don't know if they want to do that. I don't think they get that far. It's crazy we're thinking this is a problem now, but for the next part, that's going to be an even bigger problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Why don't we do, use that to segue into yeah. part four? Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. By part three. So this is the part I'm currently on. I, I will say I don't care about spoilers. Spoil away because this is COS. Okay. We spoil everything. So, um, man, okay. <laughs> I will say this is the – I barely know anything about part four other than Josuke Dang. is there. Jotaro. And do- what a beautiful doing. This is like a picnic. Jeez. This yeah. is like a picnic. So Jotaro meets his uncle. Okay, actually, yeah. let's talk about that real quick. So the protagonist of part four is Josuke. Is Jos- yeah, Josuke, he got, uh, he got Shikata. I think that's how it's pronounced. Something like that. Yeah, something. And, uh, and uh, Suke in his name all uh, can spell Joe in Japanese. So it's like Jojo. But so that's... He- He's Joseph's illegitimate child with some random Japanese lady. And immediately I'm like, would Joseph do that? And then I'm like, no, I don't it's, think he yeah, would. He and then would. later it's on, Joseph. I'm like, it's Joseph. Yeah, like that's the thing. Because at first I'm like, you know, that kind of betrays his character. And then I'm like, fuck, no, Joseph probably no, would doesn't. do that. <laughs> so. Because he's a grumpy old man at that point. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, so yeah, go go so ahead. It starts, off, it starts off with. Josuke's nephew Jotar- Jotaro looking for him to talk to him about the Joestar inheritance <laughs> inheritance or whatever and then Jotaro says something about his hair and then Josuke summons his stand and then uh, Jotaro summons his and then he summons his stand and then Jotaro summons his stand it's like hey you got a stand so do you and that's kind of how like they bond. That's it. Yeah. You, you know what? They're the, all buddy. One one real quick because that's that's about as far as I got. Um, I'm a little further with that. Where I left off for anyone listening, uh, the last thing that happened was Josuke caught a stand in a bottle and called Jotaro up like, "Hey, what the fuck do I do with this thing?" Um, and then I, I some something bothered me and I haven't been able to read since then. Um, but one thing that kind of reminded me. Kind of like how I forgot Straits was the dude from part one, I kind of forgot that Jotaro could stop time still. So all yeah. of a sudden, during the Josuke fight, he's like, man, I haven't had to stop time for ten years. I'm like, oh, you still can, okay. <laughs> yeah, I always felt that did come out of nowhere with part three anyway. Like, oh, I can stop time now. That yeah. seemed kind and, of like and, an and I think even, I think even Iraqi forgets that jo, uh, Jotaro can stop time. They well, never... wait, I, I had him do it that one time, like out of nowhere. They never really seem to say if it requires that much strength or energy. Like, it's just kind of whenever. Throughout Port 4, Jotaro does uh, stop time on several occasions. Yeah. Oh, man. This is kind of... <laughs> this. It, it kind of goes down into, like, this murder mystery plot, from what I understand, right? Just from my general yeah. knowledge. Oh, yeah. It's a murder mystery plot in a small country town, and... Jeez, doesn't that sound familiar? A murder mystery in a small country town? Hmm. Something, something, uh, television, something. Televisions, get, getting the fucking TV. <laughs> Just in horrors. Everything's coming everything's, up Adachi. <laughs> everything's coming up Adachi, yes. I love, I love that I put that thing in uh, all sorts I, I, of I, I love that, I love that. That's like the only change I like. Everything's coming up Kira. What was it originally in Japan? Or in, yeah, in I, it's it's I Yoshikage Kira. Have luck on my side. Oh yeah, fuck that. <laughs> New version yeah. is so good. Yeah. Um, everything's coming up, Kira. It's like Millhouse. Get in here. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I guess go talk about whatever with part four because I I can't contribute too much. I think Yoshikage Kira is a better a better villain than Dio. I will I'm just gonna say that. I will. Yeah, he's a agree. much he's a much better villain than Dio. Man, I want to read part four really bad now. <laughs> Let me just put it in this like, way: like for the longest time, I actually didn't read four because there was only doing. And I yeah. really wanted to read it because I was reading summaries on a uh, four, like and everything else, and like as stuff would come out, I'd read summaries on that. I'm like, but man, I wish I could actually read this, but I didn't want to read ahead because four didn't have anything good for a while. Yeah, you know, we just had doing. And then <laughs> I remember I was complaining about it on Twitter not that long ago, and someone was like, "But there's a good one now." I'm like, "There is." Yeah, and, there's a good part four. Yeah, so I was speeding through that like no tomorrow. And then, of course, you get to, like, the last two volumes that's still doing, but it's actually readable there. And, like, they actually kept a few references, and this is hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, so... Like, Yoshi, like, Yoshikage Kira is such a villain. He just wants a quiet life. Uh, 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 quiet uh, life of killing people. <laughs> the thing uh, his own salary, man. Out of... Oh, God. Okay, so... <laughs> assuming someone got this far with no JoJo experience... Um, how would you describe Du Wang? Because we keep referencing Du Wang, but I, I, I don't think we've actually described what or who. Du Wang I mean, is. The think of the origin to get you a good idea. Like I think it was something like these Chinese students were taking an English class, and they had as assignment to they decided to translate it for an assignment. There was so much broken English they failed. They failed yeah. the class. Wow, I did not actually know that. I assumed they were just they some amateur group. They translated part four for a school assignment and they failed horribly. <laughs> because the translation was just that terrible. There's like one or two lines that is like flat out the most accurate thing ever, and one of them still cracks still cracks me up so much, like at the end where you're just like, How do I say this? I had a boner. <laughs> yeah, how do I say this? I had a boner. And that's apparently the most one of the most accurate lines in there, from what I've heard. Yeah. That's awesome. So wait, why they if, okay, so they they translated all of part four for a school assignment. Then what? Why the fuck did? Because they did part five as well, right? No, no. Part oh, five was by okay. someone else. Okay, because I heard <clears throat> I heard part five's translation was spotty, so I assumed it was also them. Um, man, but yeah, Duang is kind of infamous. And then I'm assuming you Duang bought... is Duang is what they call the town of Morio, because Morio translates to Duang in Chinese. Oh, really? So it's like, stay yeah. out of Du Wang. Yeah. So is that your, your destination official, is, to... is that actually their official, like, translation name they go by, or is that just, like, a thing people have dubbed them? It's just a thing people dubbed it. Okay, because yeah. have, have you guys seen the Du Wang, like, I, fake subs for part one? And... Yeah. I saw episode yes. one with the Du Wang subs, and <laughs> so I was nearly crying. <laughs> I was crying. Intentionally bad subs that are so awesome. I love it. It was 240p too. That was even better. <laughs> it was so good. And like um, pe- people, people on A treated it as an official subgroup for like all of their jokes about all the subgroups. They just had Duang there too. Oh man, are they doing Stardust too? Oh, I no. hope so. Oh, that'd be, not. I hope they do at some point because. <laughs> they, they need to. They they have to pick back up at part four though. Oh, that, just to capitalize, someone needs to do that. As soon as the part four adaptation starts up, just copy like lines the lines. Into... Yeah. I saw a video that made fun of this one part of The Simpsons on YouTube where it's like, um, Homer's asking for advice. He's he's asking about himself, but he's making up a fake name so it doesn't sound like it's himself. It's like, I forgot the full name, but they cut that part out just so they can get... In fact, it's like the first part of this guy's name is Joey Jojo. <laughs> and they cut the rest of it out. I forgot what the rest of it was. It was like, see, I got a friend named uh, Joey Jojo, and then I was like, that's the worst name I ever heard. And here's here's the thing: this guy runs out of the bar because it's apparently his real name. But for this video, they put a picture of Jonathan over it, and they have like <laughs> fake two wang subs over the whole video the whole time. Amazing! That's amazing. Oh, I think I've seen that actually. Now that you reference, yeah, I've seen that. And then Bonnie's just like, hey, Joey Jojo. <laughs> So, for part four, part four is pretty much, yeah, murder mystery in a cul-de-sac. It's it's like anime Ed and Nitty with how <laughs> the plot is. Because it's like, it's like each each volume, each few chapters, there's a new stand user. It's like, who, who who's, who's the next stand user? Stand user every week. And 
it, it's not until the end where it becomes a co like an overarching plot. You don't really because when you get first introduced to Yoshikage Kira, you don't really know who he is. You're just like, yeah, oh, it's, it's just him getting out of his car, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, you're just like, oh, who is this guy? And he, apparently, he's talking to some woman. Okay, and then you see that he's actually talking to a severed hand, and you're just like, ooh. <laughs> it's like it's it, for the whole ride. It looks like he's just holding her hand gently in the car, and then he gets out of the car, and he's still holding her hand. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just a hand. It is. Yes, it is. It's just a hand. Ah, uh, that's just like. Like but this yeah. guy loves to clip and measure and collect his own fingernails, and he organizes them. Yes. And he loves to cut off women's hands. Yes, amazing. He's that is just. Crazy, but wants he just wants a simple life. That's all. <laughs> he just wants a quiet life. That's a simple life if I've ever heard one. So. So the characters are part of four or. I think they would make part four good because oh, the plot okay. of part four doesn't make any sense. Hmm. It's just it's like you episodic. said. First plot is just this, and then that, and then that, and that. Oh, yeah. here's murder. Watch out. Hmm. Or this, or that. Where have I heard this before? And also, <laughs> one could say that maybe it's not so much like Ed and Eddie. Maybe it's more like um, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like Scooby Doo. So it, it, I've heard this a lot. I think you guys are a lot more able to describe this than I have. Persona 4 and Diamond is Unbreakable, apparently a lot of similarities. If you, maybe yeah, it's just the premise, or does it go deeper than that? It goes it's... deeper than that. I think it goes deeper than that. Because it's... There's there's a lot of parts in Diamond is Unbreakable where you just see Josuke hang out with his friends. His friends, pretty much Okiyasu and uh, Koichi. And it kind of uh, mirrors Persona 4 when you see... when. You just have Narukami hanging with the gang. Yeah. So there's some similarities in that front and about how you don't even find out who the murderer is in Persona 4 till the very end. Well, the true murderer till the very end. And it's kind of the same thing with Yoshikage. You don't really know who this guy is until the very end. Like until about like the third quarter is when you actually really start to meet who he is. And then like, oh man, that's it. Yeah. Oh, right. That's because, Yoshikage Kira. Because <laughs> you, you kind of, what, what really put, like, set it off for me, too, was when you said, you know, the plot isn't that great, but the characters are what really make him like, hmm, I've heard this about another thing that ends with four. So, yeah. That yeah. was probably my favorite part. I hear that a like, lot. Because I, I just remember, like, when I was actually reading those stories, like, you know, I would love to read this properly. That and seven always seem like the most hyped things for me. And I couldn't read yeah, the Yeah, part last seven time. is really part seven is awesomely hype. Seven is the one I just cannot wait to do. Now that I've actually done four, and now that I've actually done four, I could say it's a, it's awesome beyond all belief. Oh, yeah, part man. four is awesome. I really like, need to get to read the it. characters that I already knew I was really going to like, and maybe like them even more. It's not like it's not like every stand user they encounter was evil. There's that there's that chef guy who made Okiyasu pretty. Yeah, there's Tonio. It's like they keep setting it up that he's like trying to hurt him it's like they just put like one like it's a slightly angled picture of him that looks like, just like there's a slight shadow it looks kind of menacing on his face but it's not yeah. it's like wow i'm feeling great here's another dish same kind of picture wow i'm feeling even better so just keep <laughs> here's another that. dish and then joe skates just like you know what i had enough he storms in there and sees what he was doing he's like, like what are yeah, you doing you need to wash your hands. Jam and wash your hands son <laughs> yeah that's like the only time you ever see him, though. I don't think you ever see him again, do you? Yeah, you see him later on when uh, when they call all the stand users of Morio together to talk about Yoshikage. Oh, uh, I guess that's because uh, it's what? after it's after yeah it's after Shigekiyo's death they learn about Yoshikage. Ready? <laughs> yeah, that's another uh, doing after product. The nickname <laughs> Fatty. Yeah, okay. Fatty. That's that's the DLC character I got for my version of All Star Battle because she, man, she, she, she. Shigekio is actually a good character, surprisingly. Fucking... Yeah, I, I like his character, just not in the game. Yeah, yeah, I I played as him once in practice mode, and I'm like, fuck this, I'm never using this guy. I wanted Kira, but Namco Bandai's online store apparently is like, you don't exist as a person, so they, they, yeah. I have not 
single good thing about that store. I had it ordered from there, but then I canceled. Like, I'll save ten bucks on the shipping. I'll get it digital. I'll just buy Kira whenever he's available. See, you wouldn't even yeah. get me to the shipping page. It's just like this is wrong, See, and I'm like, no, it's not though. I don't know what the fuck you're saying. So I'm just like, fuck I, it, I'll go on Amazon. That's what I. I have my pre-order ready to go for like beginning of April, but then it's like it just makes no sense to do it this way. Yeah, their store is yeah. pretty pretty awful. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably going to get All-Star Battle when uh, Kira becomes available, because that's the character I want to use. I was thinking of using Kosaku Kawajiri, but I heard that he's pretty shitty. Same. Yeah, it's, n- it's pretty no shitty. good substitute. He's fun, but you're not going to win any matches with him. <laughs> Weren't you kicking yeah. my ass w- <laughs> with him earlier? Because I, was just, because I was just doing really annoying stuff with the bomb on Wake Up. <laughs> yeah. I just kept throwing air bubble, air bubble. And I'm too bad when to you, do anything against it. Oh, man. Like, when you actually try and do something fun with him, it gets really difficult. It's like, oh, man, because this one move takes too long to hit, because it's unblockable, but uh, they didn't need to make it unblockable to begin with, but they I did. Was, my first experience with All-Star Battle Online, I was playing with um, friend of the show, Crisis of Fate, and his amazing, amazing JoJo skills. We were duking it out, and he was playing... I was playing part one DO, he was playing Funny Valentine, and I think I think he actually said he's gonna change mains because he just realized that Funny Valentine just isn't that great. But Yeah, he kinda sucks too. But he's fun, but again, yeah, he's not the best character to use. Well his his super, which is his counter super, is the most obvious thing ever too, if you're far away. So like uh, Well all the counter hit supers are like that. Like it's painfully obvious and that's a problem with them. Yeah, um, they last for such a long time. You can throw anyone out of it, but that's kind of usual, though. Yeah, um, it's just especially a problem because you can walk from like halfway across the screen towards them and then throw them. Uh, but it just lasts so long; it's not safe at all. Yeah, because like I was having some issue with Valentine at first because he has that really obnoxious gun attack, and I'm like, shit, I can't do anything. I'm like, wait a second, this is a 3D fighter. Just hit the X button, I sidestep all of the bullets. Um, the right moment, it was posed fabulously in sidestep. Yeah, that that's great too. Okay, let, let's save the All Star Battle talk for later. Actually, I'm, yes, we're we're jumping ahead. Already. I know I'm getting too ahead of myself. God damn it. Um, yes, part five. I guess, yeah. unless you have anything to close up part four with. Um, Highway Star was yeah. something that is nothing that I've ever read. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's like no real fighting in that, but it's just hype anyway. Yeah. All right. Part four, is, part four is yeah. You should guys should definitely check it out when when it becomes the anime in like 2015. Watch it. <laughs> um, definitely and, worth it. So yeah. part part five. I, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Is it Vento Oreo? Yeah. Yep. Vento Oreo. Oh man, I can go for some Vento flavored Oreos. Yeah, same. That's always what I think of because I'm like it's like gold. So this is this is apparently where Iraqi is just decided, you know what, fuck it, I love Italy too much, and it's pretty much set in Italy, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I this is probably the part I know the least about. <laughs> so I'm this about is the part that I know is even, this is the part where a lot of people know the least about because yeah. yeah. Like all I know is that Dio's kid stars in it, and that's about it. Yeah, it stars Giorno Giovanna, Dio's son, who was conceived through the body of Jonathan, so he's technically like the love, their love child. It's really weird how that works out. It's really weird how a lot of things like that work out. So you said this is probably the part people know the least about. Why is that? Is it just was it not translated? It, because it was it, it had a really bad translation. Even worse and than it's just, like, and it's that just is now like what? Bad as in people couldn't make sense of certain stand abilities. Bad as in nobody could uh, follow the plot very well. It was it, it was pretty bad. But it's getting oh. a proper translation now. Oh, you mean in terms of the whole King Crimson thing, right? Yeah, the, the King King the King Crimson thing is especially bad. That was where, that was like the worst part of the. It's just worse. Part five. That's yeah, a it just yeah, works. That's a Diavolo's. Is it Diavolo or Diavolo? I, think it's I don't know how to say it. Whatever. Yeah, I, I, I just say Diavolo. Di- okay, so that Diavolo stand is King Crimson, right? Yep. Yeah. He okay. has a stand on his forehead. So <laughs> it's like we have a stand, and my stand is a stand. <laughs> oh, man. Stands that have stands is the best. But Where's I, Exhibit? Quick. 
King yes. Crimson. Kim, King Crimson always uh, like I, I always think of Stephen King when I hear that because um, Stephen King wrote, wrote this novel series. I think I've talked about it before called the Dark Tower series, and the the primary antagonist of that series is a character called the Crimson King, and it's a reference to King Crimson the band, and then you have King Crimson in JoJo's as well, so. Stuff like that's funny to me, but yeah, talk about part five. I'm I'm about halfway through it myself, so I can just give like a basic impression. Like it's, eh, I guess is how I would put it. It's not bad, but I, I just not been spoiled. Yeah, like bad. I've been spoiled by good protagonists, and Giorno just seems a little not much to him. I guess right now where I am. Like yeah, they yeah he has the blood of the Joe Stars and like. He's he's not like Dio most of the time. He's more like he's more like Jonathan. Like his personality seems closer to to Jonathan. Like the diet soda of Jonathan Joestar. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan that, Light. That's what always interests me about um it's Giorno, right? That's how you pronounce that? No, it's Giorno. Giorno. It's just Giorno, not yeah, Giorno di, Giovanno. Di, okay, Di Giorno. Um <laughs> No, but what always interested me about him is every time you hear about the protagonist, I always hear about like one thing that defines them as a person or maybe an ability they have or whatever. With him, it's always, oh yeah, he's Dio's kid. Like that's like the yeah. thing, and I'm like, that's not the strongest foundation for a character. Like if he that's what people the part more than he does. Yeah. Um. So I, I guess how does the plot really kick off? Because I don't even know. Kicks off with. I think it kicks off with, like, Giorno going to Italy. He's not, like, in... I don't think uh, he's in it. Koichi goes to Italy, and Giorno's, like, a cab driver. Oh, oh yeah. Koichi goes to Italy. Like, uh, and... Giorno sends him there, and it's like, hey, just check on this guy for us. <laughs> and that's basically the only time so far, I think, I think that might be the only time, actually, at all, that Giorno even appears, just in that one point in the beginning. Like, yep. Yep. So, like, Giorno's like, I have a dream. I want to be in the Mafia. Well, yeah, I, I want to be in the which, Mafia. Which you never would hear most people say normally, like, as enthusiastically as he would. <laughs> because of Rocky. It's like the... I think the um, Scandalation group that was, like, the, the new ones said it's pretty much like the boy band Mafia. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, yeah. It's literally it's it's literally just a bunch of Bishonen boys wanting to join a mafia. Oh man! So I, I, this is apparently Diavolo kind of has it, he it, doesn't he as a villain kind of explain a little bit more about stands in general or like kind of explain what happens with part three and part four more so a little bit or something or am I thinking of something else? Well, I know four does like the backwards introduction of how the stands happen. Oh, that I, that I might be thinking of that, but yeah. Oh, we forgot to bring that up. That's right. Um, <laughs> oh bow yeah. And arrow. The origin Find of stands. a bow and arrow, shank yourself with it. Yeah. Yeah, because you'll get a stand. That's how Dio got his stand. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was introduced in part five. That's part four, huh? Yeah. It's like Dio got a stand through the bow and arrow. Then magic, the Joe Star bloodline just got stands. Because it's Jonathan's body. Yeah. So is yeah. Diavolo? What's his story? Is he just one of Dio's followers that's kind of doing his thing now, or? Um. No. He's he's the leader of uh, the gang that uh, Jorno wants to take over, and like, I don't think Diavolo has a connection to Dio. I don't think yeah, so. I think it's like Kira, or... where he just mostly operates on his own. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. So he's just kind of, kind of doing his thing. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like the whole thing mainly is like, okay, you're gonna be doing these missions for me. I need you to pick this item up and bring bring my daughter here. And all of a sudden, yeah. And then all of a sudden, she just suddenly randomly dies in an elevator. And then Bruno, his friends, like, what the hell? What just happened? <laughs> so, I, I I kind of assumed they were related because I don't really. I think you guys were talking about this before, but Diavolo's stand ability is really weird, but in All-Star Battle, I got the impression it was kind of a time freeze thing, too. It's like a time skip. Yeah. Like, it's different, but not... It's it's really weird. Like It seems to be this thing where 
Anytime a villain has a stand, time is involved somewhere. Yeah. But um, which is cool, like he, but it's confusing. like what he'll do is like he could skip time. He'll be aware of what happened, but like, say he skips ten seconds, he'll be aware of what happened. But then like you'll be where you would be ten seconds later. You'd be like, "What the hell happened? Why am I here?" Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I just recently saw like a funny gif out of a similar premise where this one guy was. Uh, the original gif was like um, this one guy was kicking like an inflatable globe ball thing in the mall. Like, it's a grown maze, kicking it, and it flies. It just hits a kid in the head, and the kid falls down. But it cuts out, but this kid, this, it cuts out the whole part of the ball moving. So it just is, as soon as he makes contact with it, with his foot, all of a sudden the screen turns red, King Crimson's face, it just says, it just works, the kid just falls over. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how King Crimson works. So it, it's almost like Dio's ability, but, because, this is one thing actually from part three that I kind of liked, is, it kind of show you. It kind of shows you Dio's ability from outside perspective. So it just seems like he's doing all. It, it almost seems like he's omnipotent, right? Where yeah, like you actually see him walking around, picking up this knife, throwing it. But yeah. everyone else is still exactly where they would be. Yeah. So like, King Crimson's is kind of, or yeah, King Cr- Crimson kind of has that ability, but I guess even more powerful where you just don't even know what happened during that time period. Yeah. It's like, it ends with not you being in the same place, but you being where you would be once that time passes. Yeah. And they just don't do a good job explaining that. <laughs> yeah, I can see how bad subs could be an issue, that, or bad scans, rather, could be a major issue with explaining that, because we just spent about a good minute explaining it ourselves. I can't wait till the good scans get through that, so I can see how they handle explaining it. Uh, how fast yeah. are those coming out? Are they coming out pretty fast or no? Uh, I don't know. Like, I know the the good ones for four are taking a while, because I believe they're the people working on eight as well. Uh, but I'm not sure about the people working on five again. All right. Um, anything else that you guys want to say about part five, or should we move on? I don't have anything else to say. It's one of the shorter parts, too, isn't it? Well, I guess Phantom yeah, it's like Yeah, I think it's like 17 volumes. Yeah, that's pretty it's short. It's really short. Prince is a dick. <laughs> yeah, Prince is a dick. Okay. Did you know that the Did you know that the Part Five PS2 game could have made it to America if it weren't for, weren't for his frickin' lawyers? It's like uh, he Being didn't. Like Rocky didn't want to make the name changes, so no, no game, no, no JoJo was bizarre. Oh, yeah. sure. that's that was a thing. <laughs> that, that was gonna come out of Japan, but it didn't. I want to retroactively yeah. go back to some part one things because that reminded me there is a fa- there is a Phantom Blood PS2 game as well, if I recall. Yep. And apparently, it had a shit ton of playable characters. Like you could play as apparently you could play as like high school Dio, high school Dio with boxing glove. Like basically, anytime there's a costume change, like they just make a new character out of it, apparently, or something crazy like that. I'm trying oh. to think of a game that I played recently that sort of does that. Um, not to that extent, but I guess Zone of the Enders 2 does it with the versus mode. You get like two or three different Jehutis. You get two different Anubises. <laughs> oh, Dragon Ball Z does it in spades with the. the oh, yeah. Games. That's true. Um, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 does that a lot, too. Um, like, you're yeah. bragging. 160 something characters. And how not do they really. play peak? <laughs> Because they count each transformation as a character. I know, which is dumb, because half of them have the same moveset. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, but what what I wanted to say too is apparently, you know those two high school, well, not even high school, those two bullies that are making fun of Arena, like, way at the beginning? And then They're they playable? Up, yeah, apparently oh, it's like God. Thug A, Thug... No, yeah, it's like Child Bully A, Child Bully B. They are playable characters or some crazy <laughs> shit like that. And it's like, geez, they they threw in everyone. Um, but but I also wanted to go. Did you guys know that there is a Phantom Blood movie? I heard yeah, it was horrible, it was, but I wanted it to see was it. So, it was so bad that Rocky didn't want it to come to home video or leave the theaters. That's it. Didn't even have Speedwagon in it. Wait, yeah. what? It, it didn't, didn't have, have Speedwagon. Speedwagon. That's even not Speedwagon even an adaptation. <laughs> God, that's terrible. No wonder Rocky like, hated it. See, because I, I keep trying to find, like, a... Apparently it was never even leaked online. I can't find oh. any footage of it, even. I would love to 
find some way where I can watch it just to say I've watched this horrible looking movie. Yeah, same. Because I want to know how that works out because, man, it just seems terrible. But it, that was like 2009 as well. It, it's crazy thinking it's so recent to the actually good anime adaptation that they have now. Uh, only a few years apart. It was sometime late 2000s. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was 09. But <laughs> Araki doesn't seem to really like the stuff that has come before the 2012 anime. Like, yeah. I, I've heard some people claim that apparently this is the first thing that Araki really co-signed on, where he was like, I'm proud of this, so <laughs> that's Oh cool. god, I am looking at the uh, PS2 game screenshots. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think there's like 10 playable Dio's. Boxing <laughs> match, young, teen, adult, the um, subject fight vampire, Joestar Mansion fight, Cemetery fight, Sticks body, and then Final Fight. <laughs> I'm assuming Final Fight is just him in a glass jar as a head. Um... <laughs> Jack the Ripper's even playable, for Christ's sake. <laughs> he doesn't do anything, really. He does so little in there, they made him is... playable. Like... <laughs> now I have to skip Arena as playable, I have to check. <laughs> Child Arena... <laughs> Oh, uh, no, she's not. Oh, that'd be awesome. Child Arena, grown-up <laughs> arena. Final Fight Arena. <laughs> Fucking have baby Lisa Lisa playable. Speedwagon's playable. You get two Speedwagons. You do? Oh, oh, one with the hat and one with the hammer. <laughs> it's so dumb. I love it. Is, is Chico playable or whatever the fuck that kid's name is? Um, I don't believe so, but you do have Wang Chan with Dio's head. Yes! <laughs> you also have Wang Chan solo. I I might want to hack my PS2 just to import this game now. God, that's amazing. Um, oh man, I guess we can move on to part six now. Stone Ocean. Haha, <laughs> time for heaven. <laughs> that's quite the stairway to heaven, everyone. Okay, so Yay, one, the only thing I know really about... Well, first of all, I know a few things about part six. One, apparently... Father Pucci, that's his name, right? Uh, oh yeah, Pucci. Yeah. Pucci. Uh, Enrico Pucci. Now, if I recall, his stand's ability is to accelerate something in time so fast that they just kind of well, become that's nothing. that's one of his. That's one of his many abilities. His stands, okay, yeah. and then it doesn't even start there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing I know is that in All Star Battle, once you once you get to the ending of that story mode. Uh, Stairway to Heaven plays in the background, and I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, they have, like, a few music references in there, like, hidden within the music itself, like, um, like, Akira's theme, because it stands right hot chili pepper, you can hear a little bit of Can't Stop in there. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't notice that. That's cool. Um, yeah. one Akira's theme? Like, Akira, like, the guitar guy. Oh, Akira. Yeah. Alright, so, part six. Stars so, Jolene Cujo, right? Jojo's yeah. daughter. Yeah, he had a daughter somewhere along the line. You don't even know the mother, do you? I don't think nope. we even meet the mother at any point. <laughs> you get to see what she looks like, kind of. Man, hey, Jolene, well, what are you doing? A lot of hot babes going into marine biology, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I heard you like dolphins. <laughs> like dolphins. <laughs> Babe, let me tell you about the time I punched a shark. I think Shark was always cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I can stop time even like you don't even know. I made the world move. I killed the world. <laughs> okay. Jotro pickup lines. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everyone Very close to Jotro. Everyone dog. pick your... Everyone Cost make... He's having a door so hilarious. He's always like, hey, back off. Everyone post your JoJo pickup lines below in the comment section. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think even hilarious yeah, is like when, 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 when Jotaro goes to visit Jolene in prison, like during during the story, there I forget his name, but there's this guy who's in love with Jolene and he, he tried to get uh, Jotaro's blessing. And oh, Jotaro was like, stay away from my daughter. I, I forget what I forget what his name was. Uh what was his name? I believe that was Anasui. Yeah, Anasui. Yeah, I gotta say, I love yeah. the name did from the All-Star, but we'll save that. I want to avoid talking about that any more than we already have. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, what else in part six? Because I know Father Pucci was apparently one of Dio's underlings in Egypt, but you just yeah. never saw him yeah. in part three, right? Yeah. yeah you only like, see uh, him in. He didn't even use a flush butt either. He just followed him. Yeah. So, uh, like, the, the entire, like, Stone Ocean is really good. We need, we need to get that out of the way right now. It's really good. Because it is, it's, it is pretty much like the big finale. It's the Joe Star bloodline versus Dio. It is just, everything comes together. It's like, you thought you got a part without Dio, but he no, worms his too way bad. He worms, he worms his, his way. way. This time through a guy. Without him. Yeah. So it's pretty much like Jolene gets sent to prison for a crime she didn't do, and she has this really bad relationship with Jotaro because Jotaro's never there. He's too busy in his freaking oceans. He, he's he he cares more about dolphins than he does with Jolene. And Jotaro has to go see her in prison, and that's where everything happens because. Jolene was only in prison just to draw out Jotaro so that Pushi could steal his memory and activate the stairway to heaven. Which was changed to made in heaven in the yeah. like in the actual volume collection, right? Because from what I hear, when it was released as issues, it was stairway to heaven. But then yeah, they changed it along the line somewhere. Yeah, because well, yeah. from what I from what I hear that. They kept it for for all the individual issues. They kept it as Stairway to Heaven to remain consistent. But then when the volume when the volume started being collected, Printed. Araki, yeah, Araki changed his mind and it was just like, you know what? In the volume collections, let's just have it as Made in Heaven. Made in Heaven. Apparently, that song fits with Part Six's story better or something. I heard that was the reason for the change. That's yeah, you hear part died. of you hear part of like Stairway to Heaven and a part of Poochie's theme and all yeah, sort of battle. Part. Yeah, you can hear a little bit. <laughs> it's also funny though, like they they were able to even keep the reference to Stairway to Heaven in the game, in yeah. the international. That was like when he activates, he says, "Climb the Stairway to Heaven." That's the name of the trophy for it. <laughs> um. I also like the name change for all, real real quick All Star Battle thing. I like how they changed his na- the name of that stand from Made in Heaven, as in something that was created in heaven, to Made in Heaven, as in a oh, maid. Maid. Yeah, like maiden, as in a fair maid lady. It was very <laughs> clever that they actually kept the pronunciation. Yeah, More I, than I, I love yeah. Some, like Sticky Fingers, Zipperman. <laughs> Don't you mean Zipperman? Uh, yes. So, so like, at the end of part six, the entire, like, haha, time for heaven, Poochie, like, recreates the universe, and if if he dies, I think it's like, if, if Poochie dies, the universe dies with him, or something like that, I can't remember, but... His death triggers the reset. Yeah, his death triggers a reset, that's right. So, he gets his ass kicked, the universe is reset, and then part seven happens. But, Before we go on to seven, I want to like have like a little thought. Remember back at part two when we we're talking about cars in space? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. about part six. I wonder what happens to him in this new universe. I uh, imagine he's still somewhere in a pillar. It's like I would love like instead of like starting in a pillar, he actually ends up starting in outer space, so he just ends up going into the pillar in the end. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's still flying. Because that, that's actually an interesting point to bring up. Because what I understand, part seven is almost a reimagining of part one. And then part part eight is kind of a reimagining of part four. So yeah, they kind of skip over what what went on with the Pillar Men in the Steel Ball Run universe. Uh, we have no idea what happened with cars and all of them. That'd be cool to see. <laughs> It would. Yeah. Like, just, you just still see him in space going. Ah! Does the Hamon even exist in part in the? It's, it's called. Universe? It's called the spin. Oh, so it's a yes. different thing. So maybe so it's kind of there. Yeah, there there might be like an alternate alternate Pillarman type thing going on that we just don't know about. Maybe. Uh oh yeah. Actually, so, isn't that how Gyro does everything in Part Seven with those? Iron balls or whatever, like yeah, with, the steel the steel ball. Ball, with the steel balls, where he he like 
accelerates them with the spin or something crazy, I heard. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get into... Uh, I guess we could just get into Part 7 right now unless anyone has anything else to say about Part 6. Nothing. Nope. Uh, All right. The only thing I really know about Part 7 is... Yay, another Zapelli. Something about that Zapelli using the spin and steel balls, and also that Jesus' body parts are apparently Dragon Balls. It's not Jesus, it's the Holy Corpse. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, Part 7 is pretty much the Reset Universe steel ball run, and it stars a certain asshole named Johnny Joestar, and... Yeah, he's a bit of a dick. He's not like he's not a gentleman like Jonathan. He's he's a dick. And he's crippled. And yeah, he was so much that it, so much of a dick that he gets crippled and he just becomes an empty shell of a man until he meets Gyro. Man, I wish when I got crippled I could meet Zapelli, but no, that didn't happen to me. Fuck. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Pretty much the thing that makes Johnny stand out is the fact that he's crippled and he has a pretty cool hat. <laughs> See, Babby Rosin didn't even have that. He just had the <laughs> Babby Rosin didn't even have a cool hat. Um, that actually, I, I'm not gonna lie. From what I've read of Steel Ball Run, I'm like, man, there's not enough crippled protagonists in media, and I can really, I can relate to this guy. Like, he is because he can't walk, right? Like, he can only crawl, really. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he he's actually worse off than I was, but that's like, man, I can somewhat relate to this dude. I can't wait to get to this part. Um. Actually, one thing I want to point out is I hear some people say, oh, you can start with Part 7, but from what I understand, that's not really the case, because it's not really a continuity reboot, right? It makes uh, a few callbacks. Yeah. It I, makes callbacks, I, especially with uh, with uh, Diego. that guy. Diego. Diego. Right, um, so Because you can't, you can't have JoJo without Dio. Because that's kind of what I've heard. Like, there's the stuff from the old universe is still kind of there, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you can't really start with Part 7, it seems. Or at least the, you can kind of char- jump on, but you're going to miss stuff. Like, the yeah. characters from Part 7 exist. The characters from the old universe exist in Part 7 in different ways. I heard something weird. Like, isn't Kira part of the Joestar bloodline now or some crazy yeah, shit? Yoshika- yeah, because Holly married uh, Holly married Yoshiteru Kira, and Yoshikage Kira is their son. That's fucking He's weird. Pretty- yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. There's this that. Not be Kira with Star Platinum. <laughs> yes, it's pretty much just Kage Kira with Star Platinum. Oh man! Now, from what I understand, did get that, that would be pretty hilarious. It's like, what is that? Why are you <laughs> hair? Why are you not looking cat anymore? <laughs> yeah, we don't get that, do we? Now, yeah. what was? Something a funny Valentine is. I, I don't know if that's actually his name or if they changed. Yeah, that that's his the, name. Oh, that's his real name. Okay, I didn't yeah, know if they had changed Valentine. that in All Star Battle. Um, so apparently, he's the president of the United States, and the president of the United yeah. States wants to become Jesus or something. Yeah, he's the twenty third president of the United States, and he wants to become Jesus. Good he's stuff. Presidents now. <laughs> Too bad he got hit in the face with some steel balls. <laughs> Oh, balls. Balls of steel. Now, is Diego or Funny the primary antagonist of Part 7? Oh, uh, kind Funny. Of... It's Funny. Funny is the... A... Yeah. Okay. Diego is, like, the rival. Like, Johnny's rival during the during the race. And Funny Valentine uses Diego to his advantage. Like, he... The... Funny Valentine's stand ability, which is D4C... Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. I think you mean filthy acts for a reasonable price. I think I mean evil enterprises executed at an economical bargain. <laughs> I don't have any of these joke needs to continue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man, God bless All Star Battle. Uh, but, okay, so, so it, his, what, his uh, yeah, carry on. Like his stand ability is to one of his abilities is to call upon people from a from uh, alternate universes to come to that world and so during the mat during one of the um, the fights between 
uh, Diego and Johnny, which was beautifully drawn, by the way. I can't wait until that part is animated because it was so cool. Anyway, give it 10 years. <laughs> give it, yeah. Give it 10 years. 10 more years. 10 more years. <laughs> so, during that fight, Diego, um, not Diego, but Funny Valentine, he summons a sta- summons another Diego from another world, and the stand that Diego uses is the world, Zawarudo. And it is pretty cool. Oh, so the world shows but, up in part seven then too, huh? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, there is one rule for the doppelganger thing, though. They can't make contact or else they die. Yeah, they can't make contact. <laughs> that's, like, as in they can't see each other or, like, they can't touch? They just can't physically contact. Okay. Um... <laughs> that'd be that'd be cool if just all of a sudden they see each other and they both just explode. Um, <laughs> no, <Or you>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me. Boom. Uh, so, actually, question: I don't really know this. Is Diego out and out evil, or is he just kind of the rival? Um, he isn't. I don't think he's evil. I don't, I don't think he was evil. He was just kind of a dick. Ah. Uh... He had his own stand too, which was called Scary Monster. <laughs> That's a great name. Um, I think it's a Bowie reference, isn't that? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it has it has to be a reference to something or other. Oh man! And then I'm out of things to say for parts. Okay, explain the Jesus thing because <laughs> I'm really curious as to how the fuck that <laughs> relates. Hang on. I have my mic muted there for a second. Oh. So, the entirety of, like, the Steel Ball run, which is, like, a race across America, it was a ploy for Funny Valentine to gather up the corpse parts to pretty much become Jesus. And... Yeah. And Gyro and Johnny stop him. And, yeah... Dead president of the United States. Now, don't the Jesus parts also give you? That's what gives people the stands, right? Like it's a stand amplifier, right? Yeah, it's a stand amplifier. Oh, so you still have the stand if you don't have a part. It's just that you get stronger. Yeah. Each Jesus part you inhale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jesus parts. Jesus parts. That that's the proper term for it, I'm sure. Um, oh man. It, <laughs> God, that's so weird. Um, man, uh, I have nothing else to say unless either of you have stuff. Um, or Please look forward to part seven because it's really good. It's probably the best, probably one of the best written parts. I can't wait till I get to part seven. All right. Um, then I guess part eight, Jojo Lion or Jojo Leon, however the fuck you're supposed to pronounce it. If and Jojo Yes, yeah. I don't Joe know anything Jolie. about this. Neon Genesis, Joe Jolian. Well, the, so, o- the only thing I do know about this is apparently it takes place after that recent Japanese earthquake and nuclear reactor fiasco. Yeah. Um, that kind it's of surprised kind of... me because that, you know what that kind of, what I immediately thought of, it's like, that would be like in like 2004, you write a series like you write a Superman series, but it involves Superman getting his powers at, because of nine eleven or something like like that. And I'm like, man, that wouldn't fly in America. I wonder if anyone in Japan got angry over that. Oh, and you probably, probably didn't not. because it was a Rocky. Yeah, because exactly. it's a Rocky and it's JoJo's and like, yeah, you so can't take it after, too seriously. <laughs> yeah. So after the disaster, uh, this huge wall thing appears in Morio, and under that wall you find. This unknown man who's given the name of Josuke Higashikata. And he is quite the weird man. For starters, he has four testicles. Is that wait, what? He does. Yeah. That do yes. they show them or is that just mentioned? It's mentioned. I oh. hope so. I, I haven't read all of that. I haven't read all of Jojo. <laughs> but yeah. Fucking Iraq. <laughs> he he has two tongues. His pupils are split down the middle, and he uh, has like. Doesn't the uh, the quote unquote Jotaro have none down there to go with uh, the Joe having four? Have I heard that right? No. Alright, because I heard someone like having none or something like that. 
Uh, like, it, it's all because of uh, uh, Josuke being two different people. He's actually two people fused together. The first person he's, he was fused with is Yoshikage Kira, who in this universe, he's part of the Geostar bloodline. So that explains why he has like the Geostar te- uh, birthmark. <laughs> You're about to say Geostar testicles, you motherfucker. <laughs> Well, Joseph. <laughs> and who, anyway, who's the other person? We don't know who the other person is, but uh, I, I, I bet you a million dollars is probably Dio. That'd be interesting. Because Dio's going to show up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Dio has to show up somewhere at Part 8. So okay. it's probably going to be like a Dio descendant of that timeline. Anyway, um, even... even uh, his stand, soft and wet, is a combination of Killer Queen and whoever the other person's stand is, because Kira has Kira still has Kira, uh, Killer Queen in his blood in his uh, timeline. He absorbs the Killer Queen, doesn't he? I don't Somebody think he abs- I don't think, I think he absorbs. I think he just always had. I think he just has Killer Queen. So I'm, I'm just going sure. like on what I've heard. Is I actually have not read much out of any summary at all for him. Mostly going and kind of clean with it. Yeah, I, I need to read up more on Part Eight because, yeah, I just I just don't get it. How um do we know how far percentage wise it is? Like, is it halfway done? A fourth done? Like, how how far? I heard on Chapter Thirty One. Yes. Okay, and you said most parts are like one hundred fifty ish, right? One fifty, one seventy. Did you say? Well, Steel Ball Run was ninety five. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> Um, but I, I've i heard, not 100%, I actually haven't fully read it, I only know summaries of it, but apparently the chapters were longer in Steel Ball Run, because that's also when yeah. you switch to monthly. So oh. it's all comparative. That's true. Um, huh, that's... Okay, so I, I'm assuming that Jojolian is also monthly then too, correct? Yes. Yeah. They, they switched They switched on magazines with Steel yeah, Ball Run. They went Run. to uh, Ultra Jump, I believe, right? Yeah, I, nope. I think that's it. So that's why it's monthly, and that's why the the kind of change there. Yeah, so man, I, I'm I'm curious to see how that all works out because I have a feeling at some point they're because they keep see, they seem to keep referencing the old universe and leftovers from the old universe. So I have a feeling at some point they're either going to combine it all together or have some weird cosmic style showdown thingy or figure it out in some way, shape, or form, but. Ha ha! Time for heaven part two. Yeah, like they, heaven two electric boogaloo. Because something's something's got to happen at some point or another with that. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure when they do it, for, but for starters, why in the heck did alternate Diego have the world? Because Iraqi. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I, I'm I'm really curious to see how that all plays out. Uh, I don't think we have that much to say in part eight simply because it's coming out as we speak yeah, yeah. There's, there's not much to work with um all i need to know is that part a jojo is pretty weird he's a I've, pretty strange guy i've heard some bad things about jojo leon actually i've heard a few i've heard quite a few people say they don't really care for it so far um yeah it could just be because it's the beginning i'm not entirely sure but i'll have to give it give it a shot because has anyone actually sat down and read it, or is this just, just all summary stuff we all know? I'm just going, I've, not even on summary, I'm going on things I've heard. Yeah, okay. I've read some of it, but then I lost interest and just stopped reading it. Okay, um, I guess we can finally go into All-Star Battle, which recently came out. And crazy before we go into it. All-Star Battle, I left a surprise link in the chat for you guys. It's the playable characters from the Phantom Blood game. Oh god, let's take a look at this. Uh, You're gonna love playable plant. Plant? Aztec Chief, Born, um, Brat B, Bruford, Kaingi, Dio Brando Young, Dio Brando Boxing Match, Claw Zombie, Dio Brando Teen, Dio Brando Adult, Dio Brando Life, Subject Fight, Dio Vampire, Dio Justo Mansion. This is ridiculous. Ugh. Jonathan Joestar Tarkus fight looks just like Kenshiro without you can the play as Yo, you can play as a police zombie. Which I think shows up for one panel. But just look at Tarkus fight Jonathan. If you just give him the yeah. stars, it's Kenshiro. Yeah. yeah. That's Kenshiro. That's awesome. Jonathan oh Star wounded. 
How many Jonathan? Shit. Yeah, look how many Jonathans they have. I'm gonna post this down below in the episode description. Like, this is crazy. Wow, oh there God. are more Jonathans than there are Dios. There's like, I, I think I just did a quick count: thirteen Jonathans. God, that's so, that's so dumb. And there's only one Ze- There's only one Zeppeli, really. Interesting. Oh, yo, you can play as the Aztec chief. Yeah. No, there are fifteen Jonathans. Wow, that's uh. You guys, there's there's more there's more speed wagon than there are Zeppeli. How many speed wagons <laughs> are there? Just the two. 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 Okay. There's... There's more Wang Chan than there is Zeppeli, because you got two Wang Chan. <laughs> That's so weird. This is like anybody who has a character model in the game is probably playable. Yeah, looks like it. This is just what it seems like. God, that's so that's so unnecessary, but so awesome at the same time. Um Do you wanna play as Claw Zombie or Doobie? <laughs> Doobie. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up who Doobie is. I honestly cannot remember. For I the life. think I I think Doobie is the zombie that Dio threatens Chico's sister with. If I if I recall correctly, because Dio kidnaps Chico's si- sister, and then she he's like, "Hey, want to become a vampire?" And then Chico's sister's like, "Fuck no!" And then Dio's like, "Doobie, have your way with her." And then like I think if I recall correctly, Doobie like almost rapes her, and then Jonathan saves her. I think that's how that works out. Um, I could be remembering that wrong. No, it looks Doobie, like, please. according to the to the site here, it looks like you're the think of the right person there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. My, my fan- and I forgot how silly looking Doobie's real face was. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. It's like got the snakes in it and all that. Oh, Katsu reminded me of this before we started recording, and I never I forgot to bring it up. Uh, Runaway Girl from Part 3 finally has a name. Because oh, of, they named her? Yeah, apparently her name is Anne now. I, I'm yeah, they named that. her in the anime. I didn't catch it. I, I watched the episode of that. I didn't even catch that part. I didn't catch that either. Katsu, <laughs> Katsu are you sure? No. Um, I have to look that up. Actually, I'll just, I'll just look it up here while I'm on the site. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully someone changed it. But yeah, apparently she has a name now, so that's interesting. Oh, they, that it is indeed. Yeah, it seems to be named Anne. It only took 30 years. Um <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Twenty five ish, more so. Yeah, but... the um, the end credits of the anime lister is Anne. Man, that's so weird. It t- twenty five years it took to name that character. Holy shit! Because I I know people even said that the side material they just called her Runaway Girl. So that's interesting. Uh, okay, All Star Battle. I think we could finally get into this. Uh, As if we haven't already. Yeah. I'm going to say, it's not, as a fighter, there are better games out there, especially for 3D fighters. If you're looking yes. for a solid 3D competitive fighter, go play Tekken Soul Calibur V, both both great games. Or DOA, even. Yeah, even DOA V is getting there. Um, or Virtua Fighter V, if you are into that. Um, <laughs> I don't know that many Virtua Fighter fans. Uh, I bought Final Showdown only because it was $5 one week. I, I I know what sale you're talking about, and I almost did the same, but I restricted myself. But, yeah, like, it, it's not... As a competitive fighter, there's a lot of balance issues, but as a JoJo game, holy shit, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. It's pretty I, uh, good. That's why I said when I wrote the review, I'm like, it's not published yet, so I can't link it, but, um... You know, so by the time the episode goes live, it might be, because I don't know how fast it is, it might go up tomorrow even, but okay. I said... Like, as an actual fighter, it's kind of slow. Other games definitely do it better. But for a JoJo's game, it's amazing. Because they get all the nods. Forever. Oh, they do. It gets all the nods down. You get, like, almost everything in that game is a reference to something. Situation finishes, dramatic finishes in the U.S. That's a reference. Uh, the hazards are references. Most of the attacks are references. The taunts, the poses. Oh, of course. Oh my god! I actually so tried my hardest not to use the word "pose" when I was writing that review. It's so hard not to, though. I I think I managed to do it. Oh god, um, it was hard. Yeah, like they they nail everything, and it's it, it's almost it's like it's its own genre. It's JoJo Simulator because that's really what it is. It's so man, it's so weird. Like even even there's some stuff I find myself doing like. 
the time stop special effect things that you can do when you have a bar and a half as Dio or Jotaro. And it's like, you know, these pretty much d- do shit damage, but, like, it's time stop. I have to. Or like, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and you, even like, some of the flashier I feel like, combos. I feel like... I feel like JJBA is getting there, like All Star Battle. I feel like it's getting to a point where it can be a decent fighter, but we're not seeing that game in any play seriously at any major, not for a while. Nah. I think if they I do a sequel, like a lot of things, but they're still. Yeah, a lot I think of... I think if they do a sequel, maybe just like a complete overhaul of the system and make it more of a proper fighter, because I don't even think CCD two planned for it to be a proper fighter. It wasn't until all the backlash they got for how broken the vanilla version was. Like I heard somewhere that like they're trying to make a JoJo's game first and a fighter second. Yeah. yeah I can definitely that see that sense. being the case. Because, I mean, when a game launched, they had all these infinites that really should have been tested out. Like, I think I, th- I, think I heard Wamu had, <clears throat> had one that was just like jump in the air, do some down heavy attack or something, and you could just do that infinitely or some crazy shit. I know Diabolo had a jumping heavy infinite. Um, uh, Jolene like a, had a infinite. Yeah, she had like a three attack infinite you could do with Stone Free. Um, Funny Valentine had one, but I forgot what one it was. I didn't see it. But let's not forget the best one, the Horse Loops. <laughs> horse oh, Loops. Horse Loops. Oh, man. Horse combos, though. Just headbutt. Another attack and headbutt, and another attack and headbutt. Man, like, how does that get passed? Uh, at that point, you just need to look at the frame data stuff in your game. You can't and... look at the frame data stuff in your game when it's 30 frames oh, a second. It's 30 frames a second? Yeah. There... You know, that that's an interesting point, too, because <clears throat> you have a fighter that's, first of all, it's 30 frames per second. Right away, it's like, you know... You can technically, I guess, have a fighter at 30 frames a second, but... Since, you know, fighters from way back when kind of did it. That's... It's seriously undermining your game, though. Like... Yeah. You can technically kind of sort of do that, but it's kind of fucking with the modern expectations. Yeah. Um, but as a game... Even the more, even the more, even the more poverty fighting games are in 60 frames a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's as almost like, a, like it's an unspoken rule at this point, really. Pretty much, it's, yeah. it's just expected. You you have sixty frames or bust. Um, but man, as a game just to dick around with friends online, it's really fun. Like I said before, I was playing with Crisis of Fate, a uh, good Marvel playing friend of mine, and he was actually on episode ten of COS for a little bit. We were just dicking around for like two hours, I think, and we were having a blast, and we were just trying out all the different characters and stuff. And I mean, Crazy Tank and I, you, I mean, we were going at it for a little while there, and we we're just dick, dicking around and having fun on Skype too. It's a lot of fun. Oh man, yeah, it's like, it's like more you, you, if you don't want a competitive thing, you just want like bullshit around. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, the the campaign stuff is a little obnoxious, like, very obvious pay-to-win elements there. Uh, I've gotten a, f- a few, um, costumes and item stuff from that, but it's like, man, it's kind of a pain in the ass to go through those. I don't mind now that it's only two minutes, but I don't think that should even be in the game at all. Yeah. I really don't, like, there's one thing if your game was entirely free-to-play, then I could see that. But, but it's not. <laughs> it's it's a full retail game. It's like I remember looking at the sales of the game. The first week it sold like truckloads, and the next week it sold a fraction, a really 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 small fraction. Mm-hmm. And because everyone like, realized post- it was garbage. Yeah, and people were like posting images of how they were breaking their discs. Yeah, it, yeah. I, like I the entire Japanese JoJo fan base. Well, it's not even a fan base. It's like a fan legion and a country. Fan world, yeah. No, a fan world, anyway, if you will. Ev- all of them were just super pissed at how terrible the game was, and CyberConnect Two got so much shit for it. They had to publicly apologize, say that they were going to f- try and fix the game and shape it up to do- be a decent fighter. Because how many times did the game get patched anyway? Do Quite a few. Patch- yeah, it got patched like six times. I believe. Yeah, yeah. that's more patches so. than Marvel. <laughs> oh God. Uh, Suck it. <laughs> More patches in Street Fighter. Man, if only I could sword loop with Dio. 
Just no knife loops, man. <laughs> yeah, knife loops. I know. I, I'm pretty sure there is actually a combo you can do where you can get knives in twice. I have. A, I, I think Stick. that exists. Um, man, that's the other thing too. Is it really some of those combos? It really doesn't feel like because with other fighting games, you can kind of see see like okay that that move links perfectly into that move and i can tell that the developers kind of intended for you to be able to link all these moves together for a combo with jojo's it just kind of feels like they're like and eh, just do whatever the fuck like the only thing yes. i can really think of is like dio's b and b is like yeah i can see the developers intended that with but with like some of the stand characters it's like i don't even feel like this was intended you can just kind of do these things yeah, CC2 has no experience making decent too. fighters. Yeah, they have no experience making decent fighters. Look at Naruto Ultimate Ultimate Ninja Storm. That's a joke. <laughs> I played one of those once. It was fun, but not in the fighter sense. Like, this is fun to mess around with. And that's the same thing we're thinking. It's not, even, a fun, it's not even fun to mess around with anymore. It's just infuriating. Uh, my, I forgot my, exactly which one it was. It wasn't one of the newer ones. It was like, I think one of the first ones they did with like Storm. Yeah. One of the first oh. ones they did. I haven't played because Storm is 3D, right? Because yeah, yeah, like move around in 3D. Back in the Ultimate, day, my friends and I would always Ultimate huddle Ninja around Ultimate. Ni- yeah, Ultimate Ninja was 2D, and my Ultimate friends. Ultimate Ninja was fun. I don't, yeah, I don't care I, what anyone said. That was my game. <laughs> I had I, I had a lot of fun with those. It was loading times aside. It wasn't that bad. Like my friends and I, for the longest time, we would always play Ultimate Ninja 3, and then man, I I, I think I still have those. Yeah. And I remember too, like we'd always try. There was to play. a competitive scene. There was a competitive scene for the Ultimate Ninja Games, and I was a part of it. Oh yeah, that's how you got your name, isn't it? Yes, that's how I got my name. <laughs> I did, I never knew that, but man, I kind of wish I jumped on that hype train. But I remember because my friends and I would always be like, "Hey, want to play Clash of Ninja? F- fuck no, let's play Ultimate Ninja." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> so always did that. CyberConnect Two just... can can definitely make fun anime games. Yes. Oh man. Anyway, back to All Star Battle. I, I'm running out of so things how about to say. That story mode. Oh jeez. What, what story mode? What story mode? It's it's the best slideshow ever. The story is literally in the loading screens. Yeah, it's yeah, like a, it's... like the few times they actually give you a story that's not in a loading screen. It's like it's like a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. <laughs> but they made it's like that one kind where the background never changes. Yeah, it's it's really weird. Like it's just kind of inf- info dumps. Uh, what I think is really funny too is, well, there are some points where it's like they're skipping vast chunks of the story. Like I think part five is three fights. Yeah, five and six are three fights only. Mm-hmm. And what I find really interesting too is Diego Brando somehow is not in the game, which I know a lot of people were. Yeah, considering upset. yeah. A lot of people were upset about it, considering that that was a major fight in Part 7. It seems like Diego, Brando, um, Stroheim, and Speedwagon are like the three everyone's pretty upset about. You could have done some hat combos, man, but no, we don't even get Speedwagon. Yeah. He just the main yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually make him your uh, your tagline on your card, though. Oh, that's cool. Because, yeah, like you, got, you could start unlocking... Uh, through campaign mode, if you get enough points, you can start unlocking tag lines for characters that aren't even playable. Like, um, I got one for Dyer that says, "My name is Dyer." <laughs> I got like a, I got a George one. Um, I got one for Senator Phillips, the guy who like deals with committee to drive the car. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. <laughs> dunk. I love that image so much, <laughs> sir. It's a space jam. We cannot dunk. <laughs> dunk. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> you know, if he ends up getting remembered solely for that image, I will be perfectly satisfied. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> uh, I, like I, I don't know, I, I'm running out of stuff to say for All Star Battle. Like fun game. I'm not entirely sure if I'm happy paying fifty with it, but I'm a JoJo fan, and I wanted the physical copy. I felt obligated. So I don't mind paying the fifty out of the support, but yeah. if it was for the support, I would have rather waited till like twenty five. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a perfect price. For I, I feel I feel as this CC two is just gonna keep on patching it and just make more and more updates. Then maybe maybe one day, maybe like version two point become a decent fighter. Hopefully, maybe. Um, as, yeah. as of right now, though, it's just fun to dick around with, and I mean, it's not like super serious competitive, and I 
even people that are really good at it online don't seem to really take it that competitively. Like they, I've I've seen some really good guys online, and they seem to just kind of they're playing for fun. You can tell. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess I do have one more thing to add about the game, actually, because um, you know how they're doing the DLC schedule, right? Yeah. Kinda. It's like weekly. It's, it's apparently like not even the same word they with Japan. Oh. Because apparently, old Joseph, Lisa, Lisa, and Bao are slated for this update coming to the store, and they weren't even the second campaign. So I'm not 100% sure if that's even accurate or not. That's just, like, what I've read online. Interesting. But it would make sense because Old Joseph was on the store when the game first came out, but you couldn't use him because his campaign wasn't up. Only the campaign for Akira and Shigekio. Yeah. So I actually ended up buying Old Joseph, so whenever that thing comes out, you just use him right away instead of having to buy him then. But mm-hmm. they're not even going in the right order from what I can tell. like, according to what I've read, it's yeah, going to be... And I've also, heard, I've also heard that the DLC is cheaper in North America than it is in Japan. I think in Japan it's like $8, and in North America well, it's it was it was like a reduced rate when it first came out for like a couple of weeks, and I went to full price. But um, oh. I'm not sure how that's going to work for here. But uh, yeah, two. That's cheap anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But like what I read, it's apparently going to be, with this next update, it'll be a Lisa Lisa, Old Joseph, and uh, Bao. And then the next one will be, um, see, I think it was Fugo, Anasui, and Vanilla Ice. And then at the end of the month, they're going to do Iggy. Oh, okay. And what was in the Japanese order, though, was um, Campaign 1 was right. That came over as it was. 2 was um, Iggy and Fugo. 3 was Old Joseph and Lisa Lisa. Then 4 was Vanilla Ice and Nasui. And then 5 was just Bao. Hmm. Mm. That's that's weird. I wonder why exactly they're doing that. That's so oh, weird. So, yeah, like, I I just read that. That's all. And that seems to be my motto for a lot of this. <laughs> it's all good. I'm we're, sorry we're... for anyone who actually knows this who I've offended. <laughs> I think that goes for all three of us at this point. Um, yeah, there's someone that really intensely loves Vento Oreo and is like crying right now. Um, yeah. They didn't explain King Crimson properly. <laughs> Who do they think they are? Excuse me, Rosin. Let me send you this long ass email explaining properly King Crimson and his time abilities. I want um, to like, buy like the, the little fake comic panel that someone made, like that just has King Crimson rolling around the floor, getting pissed off how no one gets him. Ah <laughs> 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 uh, man, fucking Diavolo. Um, um, man, I think. That wraps it up, for at least for my thoughts. Unless Crazy Tank, you have one or two more things to add. Um, I think I pretty much hit all the points I would have, would have hit. All right, yeah, okay. Let's move on to them emails. So, got to start out with this first one. We still have breath. So this is from Base Yahweh, who um, <laughs> man, that name. He hasn't emailed in for a while, but he wants to know how fast each of us can aura, 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 and muda, muda. So, um, oh my, should, um, should I, I don't make anyone up to do that? Should I, should I yeah. start this off? The, if I, no, I'll I, do it first. Okay. I'll do it first. Go for ora, it. Ora, 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 ora. There. Man, you're a loser. Okay. Let me, let me do it. <laughs> uh, ora, ora, ora. Fuck. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. Ora, ora, I, I can only do like in whispering, so it wouldn't even count. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, like hold if on. I were to actually say it, it would a it would be kind of loud, but b would also be like really slow. And I don't even know how that works. Some things just whisper faster. Yeah, I think I can muda better. Muda, 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 muda. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Muda, yeah, muda, 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 muda. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's that's slightly there. Slightly there. Can kind of hear it. Um, God, yeah. Thanks, Base Jaway, for making us all sound like idiots. Mostly me. Well, um, I think I found that comic. <laughs> yeah, I'll link to it below. Here, send yeah. the, put, post the link in the Skype chat. Yeah. Um. And there. <laughs> oh god, I, that's right. They also make the yeah. drama point. Yeah. <laughs> None of these fuckers watch the future Rob episode. Todd keeps on slipping. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so <laughs> moving on to the second second of three questions. Um, oh, geez. So this is from Crisis of Fate, and he wants to, he, uh, 
he uh, says he's glad to see that we're doing a JoJo episode. He says that manga really needs more attention. So, so the first thing he wants us to do is think of a random song, band, or album that isn't a character slash stand in JoJo. Lotus okay. Juice. <laughs> 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 you motherfucker. MC um, Hammer. Okay, I'm gonna go with Rage Against the Machine because that seems like one of those bullshit, not even to name names that Araki would come up with that I don't, I don't think that exists yet, so. Yeah. Um, oh, and then he says, go to, okay, so this is a, this is a link to a random page on the superpower listing wiki. So he wants us, he wants us all to click this link and, Whatever power this is is the power of our stand. Oh god, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, I'll go first. Um, and my stand's power is apparently isolation, which is the ability to enter into a state of non-existence. Um, okay. Uh, hold on, I want to read. Mine the, is. I want to read the capability. The user is capable of turning themselves completely imperceptible and non-existent to the rest of the world whereas they can see them for all practical purposes they do not exist that seems like a villain power from one of the oh, arts man. senpai will never notice me now god damn it you're right my stand power is the power of my stand lotus juice has the power of psychic force field generation <laughs> psychic energy manipulation psychic constructs capabilities the user can create force fields or psychic energy and yeah, that's pretty much it. I can just make force fields. According to this site, MC Hammer has supernatural manipulation, the ability to manipulate the supernatural, which is let's see here, capabilities. Supernatural is that which is not subject to the laws of nature, or more figuratively, that which is said to exist above and beyond nature. So basically, anything. I'm basically God. Okay, yeah, pretty much. MC You're... Hammer is God. <laughs> Today I learned <laughs> MC Hammer basically got um wow <laughs> that was actually really fun thanks for that evil crisis that was so uh, worth it man senpai will never notice rage against the machine um or say right then he just says keep up the great work okay and then moving on to this okay actually hold on i'm not sure if this email is jojo yeah that email is not jojo related i had forgotten okay this one this one is jojo related it's the last one so this is from lightblade and he wants to well first he wanted to ask our opinion on jojo all-star battle which i think we covered already and then he says this is probably one of the most common questions would you recommend someone start with the anime or the manga start with the anime the anime is beautiful yeah, I would say start with the anime. I would say so as well. The only thing is I really don't like the first episode. I thought it was really rushed, and I maybe it's because I read the manga first where it's a little more descriptive, but, like, man, that first episode felt really rushed to me. But after that, like, episode two onwards, absolutely amazing in my opinion. Like, yeah... Like, I I feel like without background knowledge, a lot of episode one doesn't necessarily make the most sense, but then episode two, three, and so on kind of add on to that and makes everything cohesive more so. So, yeah, start with the yes. anime. It's, it's beautiful, too. Like, the animation quality is great, and it's just getting better with season two, so... I heard they barely even had a budget during season one, so they had a good job of working with that. Yeah, because it looks great. I couldn't tell. Honestly, because it's just so stylized that it's amazing. Now, from what I understand, like I, I ha I'm not gonna lie, I haven't finished watching all of Battle Tendency in anime form yet. But from what I understand, a lot of the Italy stuff is just like not many animation frames going on. So it almost feels if you're literally watching a manga. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, that's that's it. Yes. We 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 right. did everything. I, I'm pretty sure that's it. I do want to say that this is episode 29.5, and as people expect of COS at this point, every 10 episodes we FAP, which is featured audience participation, where we get on the Cathedral of Shadows Skype account and then add people to the group call, and you can be on COS yourself and chat with us about any random topic. I'll have a instructional video like I usually do 
posted later this week. I think we'll do that this weekend. Um, hopefully, I can make it more European friendly this time. Uh, I'll try, but uh, I'm no promises yet. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it, really. Uh, crazy, yes. crazy tank as our guest. I want to thank you for coming on, nerding it out, speaking for jo- me on. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, speaking JoJo's with us for a couple hours now. It seems holy shit. This is a long episode, but worth it. Two and a half hours. Jesus. Yeah, good, good talk, good talk. Now, uh, is there anything you want to plug? I'll have your Twitter link down below. If that's that's okay, I could plug. All right. Um. So yeah, th- thanks a lot for coming on, man, and I think that's about it. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.